Perhaps now it works. Yes, I'm seeing it. Can you guys get a sound off? Hello. Yeah, there we are. Testing. Hello. Beep beep. Wonderful. All right. I need to read from the beginning again. <laughs> yep. All right, take two, <laughs> session 36, Feast and Famine. Uh, we last left off with the party milling about the Dragon Tower. Uh, sorry, the Silver Tower in the Dragon Tower's district of Sharn. Uh, also, thank you, Mythic, for letting us know the problems uh, with our audio. Uh, that said, uh, to kind of move the story forward a little bit, I did a write-up that would lead from that last session, 35, into this session. Uh, so I shall now read out that right up. So Draxer is befuddled by exactly what exactly the tower could be made of. He's had experience with something back on Argonessen. However, he cannot say exactly what it is. Not that he doesn't want to, but his memory of it is vague at best. How Kenneth could get a hold of something like this is beyond him. He reiterates that he is a warrior, not a scholar. Not as far as dragons go, anyways. He says it feels like it's in a juxtaposition between two planes. He doesn't think the building itself is, but the stuff that it's made of is. This is said as the party is still milling about the Silver Tower. The skip driver insists that remaining much longer will be funny. If they want off, then be off. Under the request of the party, he is asked to take them to the Cogs so they can visit the Ash Black District of Upper Cogs, which is where our forge home is. However, the party is intercepted on the way there. A house civis eagle lands alongside the skiff. It drops a parcel of, uh, sorry, a paper parcel at Rhiannon's feet before it sets off. A small warding room on the on the parcel vanishes, and the emblem of House Lyrander appears where the rune was. The parcel lofts itself upward towards Rhiannon, and a high, uh, high pitched voice emits from it. Speak a mail from Rhiannon to Lyrander on behest of House Lyrander. We welcome you to the house. Your attendance is required in the blue tower of the Dragon Towers immediately. In the parcel is your signet ring, officially marking you as an uh, heir to the Mark of Storms. We wish to congratulate you on your awakening within Morgrave University several nights ago. And to have you sign your papers. Failure to do so could mark you an excoriate of the house. Thank you for your time. Message sent by Vey de Lyrander via Dernel de Sibis. It was loud enough for several passers-by on their own skiffs to shout congratulations as well. Rhiannon would recognize the play as a move to call her out in public in order for an immediate response. The parcel burned away, revealing a silvery ring, which resembled a serpent that swirled around the finger before biting down on a lightning blue stone at its centerpiece. The skiff pilot did not wait for the party to order him back to the Twelve Towers. He went rather against their will there immediately, as most common folk would not want to cross a dragon-marked house. There was little fanfare to be had. It was a rather tedious process to get Rhiannon signed into the house, though Vade de Lyrander was extremely polite in the ordeal. To those familiar with Legend of Korra, she's similar to Lin Beifong, Toph's daughter. She has darker hair, not quite as old. She explained several important notes and was quite sisterly to Rhiannon. Of what she went over, these stood out as the most important. Rhiannon is recognized as a dragon-marked hare. Rhiannon is immediately able to apply for her pilot's license, as some work was already done by Vey, uh, as she recognized Rhiannon as one of the Skyfire trio. Rhiannon is a free agent of the house. Due to her mark, or due to her power and her mark, it puts her several... Ab uh, ranks above lesser marked members. This means she's able to do work for other houses without taking a major cut in profits. Only 5% goes back to the house. Rhiannon is given a Lyrander Emblem of Storms. As it explained by Vey, ex exceptionally remarkable for those who have a Mark of Storms. When casting a marked spell, its attacks and DCs are increased by 1. In addition, once per day, it can restore one of these spells, 
and it is an attuned item, and attuning it requires sometimes uh, channeling elemental magic into the emblem, uh, as it and, and it must be attuned after it is used to restore a spell sometime that day before the next day comes along. Rhiannon is not required to wear the emblem at all times. However, she is required to wear the ring at all times, though having the emblem certainly helps in situations that require a bit of diplomatic finesse. The other members of the party were given a small tour of the facility while this is going on, in which they learn these things for their time. House Lyrander is a rather chaotic house. It's filled with Korovar, and Korovar are half-elves for those not familiar with Eberron. From all walks of life and professions. <laughs> no flash photography was allowed. <laughs> uh, house <laughs> Lyrander's tower is made of magical stone as well, which prevents easy spying or sight through. They're happy to answer that it is called Llama Stone. Not like that vile stuff that Kenneth uses. This is connected for, or collected from Lamanian manifest zones, where the stone is warped and infused with the plane. They do not know what Kenneth or the other houses use, but they don't hold theirs as a big secret or anything to be hidden. They are proud of its use. The guide even mentions that they suspect that Dreadhold is made of the same material. And Callie had previously learned that uh, Dreadhold is built on a Lamanian manifest zone. Several House Lyrander members had been hired to go along with the shipment to Vatherond to aid the Caniths uh, in piloting or testing some new vessel. They confirmed that Mary or Ambassador had not been seen on this uh, trip to Vatherond. They've learned a lot about the Skyfire Trio thanks to Tor and Lyrander. And each party member, uh, plus one additional one for Rhiannon after their meeting, uh, is awarded a single-use slowfall token. By this time, afternoon had set in. Vade de Lyrander insisted upon taking the party out to lunch, her treat. So we eventually reached the Silver Platter, a restaurant that seems rather fancy on the outside, but was well-worn on the interior. It was weathered and loved. The food was completely free of magical substance graphs, MSGs, and was served fresh every day. It reminded Rhiannon a bit of home. During this lunch, we learn several people or groups are looking for the Skyfire Trio. She doesn't like who they might be. She suspects the Emerald Claw. She's dealing with them while fending, or she's dealt with them before while fending off pirates when shipping stuff up to Stormholm. She suspects that she, along with the group, has been followed and will continue to be followed, though she has no proof. She says she has pretty good instincts for such things. She also hands Rhiannon a parchment and says do not open it until Rhiannon gets back to the inn. She shows her own identification papers, emblem, a ring, as well as two marks of honor in service to Sire. She says that, I'm on your side. We'll have our, our home back before you know it. Of which, the latter she quickly hides away again. When asked how she knows so much, she says, Harvey met with me. Said his head is going funny and that he's being watched or manipulated. We had a fling some years back, and I had tried to abscond with him to, well, never mind that old story. She believes that everything is somehow tied together. Marie, Ambassador, Kavala. She has no news of Leo de Caneth, but believes that he's being played or manipulated in some fashion. For that matter, she cannot be exactly sure uh, how many could be under some form of manipulation or uh, uh, some other form including herself. She thinks that this is all bigger than it appears, though she's not quite sure. Again, her instincts lead to her believing this. Lunch eventually leads into late afternoon, early evening. She warns that the cogs are dangerous right now, especially as night comes and most workers are returning back to their homes. Vey makes light of things as she departs from the, from the group and from the silver platter, and it's not long before another message arrives. Friend lands on Kali's shoulder. As he does so, a gentleman falls down a set of stairs, dropping a small crate he'd been hauling. The crate crashes and several vials of oily liquid spill out. Two passers-by slip in the oil and crash into an already dispersing crowd, which causes yet more people to get tripped up and fall. Near a dozen or so 
people are on the ground by the time the bird speaks up. So, uh, anyway, they're getting into Ash Black now. They said to wait at the, at the end. Things are rough down there. Some of the new leaders, uh, higher-ranking goons, are causing trouble, referring to Harash. With that, the party is able to make their way back to the inn and pursue non-conflict downtime activities, in which uh, Kali had been reading up on uh, Mama's tome, and Rhiannon, of course, will look over the letter, to which we'll get to in just a minute, uh, and I know that Selica had read the Mind's Eye, and Sa probably spent the night drinking. That said, would be correct. <laughs> morning arrives. So too does this session. Light rain is falling on the streets of Sharn. Sleep in is busier than uh, average for breakfast. Filled with patrons who don't want to venture out just yet. A soprano saxophone blows a gentle melody aided by a strumming lyre from two musicians on stage. There's a way in, Five says, her gruff voice and deep for a woman. The old tinkerer near the gates, Six adds. Yes, he's had he's been ready to aid as soon as he had seen you, Kali. Said he recognized you from the ceremony. Five looked down to her cup of mead. She picked it up and took a long swig. His name is Cray Nebelhopper. Said he saw you down there the other day. He couldn't reach out to you on account of standing out. He's got a spot in the back of his shop that leads to the tram. Well, oh, sort of. You only get one chance, and probably only four people at most, but the the less, the less risky. And that's where our session starts. But I do want to address that uh, the letter, Rhiannon, you spent most of the night uh, reading it and trying to de to decipher what it is. It is written in a cipher that you do not have a code to just yet. The letters are essentially completely random and done in multiple languages so if you can give me an intelligence uh we'll say an intelligence check with your proficiency bonus added break out the old dice intelligence hello, old, hello old friend roll it rolls bad screw you you've always hated me <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's not like another situation at the estate where it was just nothing but twos until the rolls decided it was important enough to get a good one. So proficiency bonus plus three. So that's a plus six all up. That is a 21. 21. All right. You are certain that the various languages that are written on this uh, page each have their own meaning. So each of the, we'll say, four languages that are on this page, uh, it's going to be Goblin, Draconic, Elven, and Common. I'm just making a special note myself. Mm -hmm. Could I have, while well, reading it, um, cast to comprehend languages as a ritual? Yes. So each one of these languages has its own sentence to it. The first one in Draconic is the one that you pick out. Basically says that he is listening within the house. I'm going to also copy these over. The second one in Elvin says that he speaks but does not act. The uh, goblin one says that he comes from below. And the last one in common just simply says, speak now. And I'm copying those over to our Discord. There you go. And 
and it is no. yes it is up to you to try and figure out uh, what that could possibly mean there's no magic within the parchment no detect magic nothing like that this was written mundane ink basically uh so casting spells on it essentially proves to be fruitless it's yeah, it does nothing. yeah it's simply a coded message up for you to decipher um that said we're starting off with the less the less risky that is five and six along with the party here in the sleep in at morning time I just realized that you guys aren't here in Tailspire. I'm just waiting for GM, apparently. Weird. All right. Are, did you guys update your Tailspires? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll close it out and try again. Because I fetched all the players. I was going to the manual and come back in. Maybe that'll fix it. Reloading. Of course, now mine's going to be acting up. Can we get some decent technology tonight, please? <laughs> Nothing's running the work. Nothing that works on Unity wants to work. Is Unity being DDoSed? Unity's just being Unity. Yeah, I, I know. It's, it's an <laughs> engine. Yeah, just waiting on GM. Oh, mine doesn't even want to operate now. Joy. Seems like I'm reloading it's, uh... mine. Well, you know what we can do? Your players can all go to the stream. <laughs> and we can follow along where the maps are in the stream. <laughs> and you can just tell us to pause it whenever you need to use GM stuff. <laughs> yeah, you could. you could also just do that in the channel right here. You could screen share. Yeah. So that way we don't have the lag of the actual stream. Let's see if That's the restart true. works though. Because it's, it's definitely not showing us anything. <laughs> no, uh, I'm restarting GM. There we go. Okay, I was okay. about to say waiting on GM is gone, but that's because you left. Yep, restarted it. All right. Hey, I'm in again. I can move. You can move. I can't even see you. I mean, no, I, can I don't think models are down. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, how do you have your token? I don't see it. Yay. Yeah, my I don't... token's vanished. Yeah. I think they reset everything or something because the tokens were here last session. Yeah, they updated like the rendering on them or something. They look a little bit smoother now, which is nice. All Might right. need to replace everything, which sucks. Replace everything? What are you talking about? As just in the tokens. Re just... Yeah, as in put them back. Well, all that hard work the is tokens... now done. The tokens look more <laughs> no. high definition than I before. Mean, I mean for all of the tables, not just this one. Oh, don't worry about it. They don't we mind. don't need a bunch of NPCs. They're not important. Yeah. Not important mm. played characters. I am not talking about NPCs. I'm talking about the player characters on all of the Tailspire boards. Well, you oh, just no, there's only us. You get each one. Yeah, no, yeah. no, we don't actually stay on every board. We get removed from the last board and put onto a new one. Yes. Okay. Jeez, God, so, right. how the thing works. A, and, he, and the GM gets a special list of like a quick drop, pretty much of all yep. the player characters. Yep. All right. Again, <laughs> 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 less less risky. Five and six are here, conversing with the group uh let's see i have some uh, not seem... music let's let's go with some rain here somewhere rain rain medium there we go and if any of the audio is a bit too loud just let me know uh it would seem we are once again in the unenviable position of being better served splitting up Same so. If it were all four of us to go down, it would still be difficult to hide the two of you in plain sight, as it were. 
whereas we, and gesturing to Sa, also stand out in our other area of investigation far more. Mm -hmm. uh, if only, or perhaps, uh, out of character with that emblem, so I'm able to recharge uh, Marcus Storm spell? Yeah. Cool. So effectively, I could have the, with a break in between, have the Ching was out for at least two hours, and then for two hours, we could effectively have Pass Without Trace. That's just an idea. That just think... gives you advantages on stealth, doesn't it? Yeah, like a plus ten. I and... think that if we are going to do so, that it seems pretty clear who should go where. I believe that you would be best served with Samuel and Sedraxir by your sides. And who would go with you two? You don't need to worry about us. Five and six, if they are willing to venture down again. If not, then I always have at least one other person of backup. But seems any tenable route. Five and what... and six will add that they'll probably not be of of much aid in getting back to where you're going. That they might actually be a hindrance. If you stay close enough somewhere within Cog's Gate, however, you would at least be able to easily get a message to you that you could get elsewhere. That would work. You do not necessarily need to join us the entire way. Yep, they'll, they'll agree to <laughs> because, that. Because out of character, them being close enough then Zia could either get to them or there's a couple other methods that we could get something to them, even just like sending a, a runner or a courier or something. Yeah. Yeah, because whatever, I mean, whatever's going is going to go through the tram. Yeah. And Zia could easily do that. Seems like it's the only real choice we have. How long should we bet out these inquiries before we attempt to rejoin each other. Hmm. So it's early morning right now. Six to seven hours. That would be late afternoon. afternoon. Afternoon, early evening. Yeah, before it gets dark. Uh, out of characterly, should Celica's armor be ready by now? Let me check. I gotta make a roll for that. Okay. Yes. It was but, but Celica's was... armor, shield. Was... What else? I think that was it. There was something else for sure. Well, you had the mask, which got added onto your armor. Yeah, but there were, I think there were six total things. Carly's armor, necklace, mask, my armor, shield, and I think he said he was going to try and do something for the last lot, but I don't know if that was the necklace or something else. I think he said he was going to make like a dagger or something. I'm pulling up my list. Yeah. Oh, it's like because I'm a delaminated. That's the start again. <laughs> so I have the leather armor plate. Replica mass, dice set, necklace, and the shield. The dice set, that was it. All right. You would have to check. I have made the roll. Theoretically, he should have something done. Do, what do we already have? I, I know we have the mask. The necklace. The mask, necklace, and the the studded leather armor. That's all right. he's wearing. And Saw currently has the mask. And Rhiannon is wearing the necklace? Yeah. Okay. I am completely defenseless. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> well, I mean, we could go get your plate armor real quick if it's ready. All right. Uh, so you would have to check first. Yeah. But I have made the roll. Uh, he definitely would have something done by now, but the roll determines exactly what. Yeah, Excuse it's me. literally on the way to where Saw and Kali are going. So, however, it is not on the way for Rain and Silica. Yeah, but if it is ready, then five and six could just fetch it to you as long as you guys aren't in the midst of something crazy by that time. Well, I mean, again, it's going to be a while to get that back up. You have to take a while to get down there, and then another yeah. while to get back up. Yeah, but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, and they won't be helping Rhiannon, you at that point. Rhiannon has sending now. Mm -hmm. Please give me your coins. Spell. Give me, slot me your 25 cent coins. Does it, does sending cost money? No. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, that's right. It doesn't because I, that's why I was like, "Oh yeah, this is broken." You yeah, can make it, it just costs you a spell slot. That's why. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. I mean, I. I think that that would be an excellent plan, and of course, if you have had no word of us, and it is getting past our time for our rendezvous, you can now avail yourself of more magical means of getting in touch. He looks at you with a grin. I'll send for you. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> get it, but I'm not laughing. <laughs> I wasn't going to, and then Vex did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sa, can you think of anything we should grab before we head down? Alcohol. We get the better stuff down there. Yeah, and Kali's always got some good alcohol on her. I mean, isn't it coffee now? I was about to say, you mean coffee? No, Kali has several bottles of alcohol she carries with her at all times. Oh, there you go. She's okay, Skyrimming remember it. Kali, Kali bought extra stuff at that one place. Yeah. She's well, been price, carrying she's that not one yet. Because she generally gets alcohol wherever we're at. That's for when you can't get any. Or an emergency for, you know, bonus diplomacy checks. <laughs> but we can always fix the cup, you know, mm -hmm. if Saw decides she'd rather have alcohol. She wants coffee hall now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can, oh my gosh, we, what's, what would the Eberron equivalent of that be of Irish coffee? Hmm. Uh, Lazar coffee? Siren no, coffee? No, no, I wouldn't say that it... Yeah, yeah, I would say it's more of a sire kind of thing, not not Lazar. Lazar, basically, whatever they can find that's been fermentable, they'll they'll use. Perfect. They, they could make friggin' beer out of cabbages. Well, siren Ugh. coffee up, then. <laughs> some cabbage. Alcohol. You want some Baileys? <laughs> I got some, some Baileys that, for you. Give me some of that onion beer. <laughs> All right. Mm. That said, um, so Drax here. As soon as I find his token, every time I see, see Saw's name, I'm like, Ugh! yeah. Of course, <laughs> we gotta make sure that Sadrax here and Samuel are actually, you know, willing to go with them. You no, know, they're common things to do. Well, <laughs> Samwell, he informs you on his way out that he has some previous arrangements made to head over to Morgrave University. Uh, he says something about the lady, I mean, the um, the Ark Wreck. Uh, they, they need somebody to help uh, broadcast for them. He says, kind of almost wistfully, as he's heading out with a smile on his face. Also, I got a photo shoot later on, <laughs> and I uh, can't miss that. He's he's two timing against the scholar from Talveristas. <laughs> oh no, bard with other people who would have guessed. How, how dare he be a bard? Yeah. 
stupid sexy Samwell. <laughs> like he's wearing nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> so Drax here, he looks a bit troubled. He says, that man for 15 minutes tried to get me to see if he looked good or not. I don't think he understands what I am <laughs> fully. <laughs> so I thought for sure someone told Samwell. No, he, he, he does. Like he knows. Oh, okay. He doesn't, he doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. He expects he me to so know if like, he, okay. if he looks attractive, I believe, but I honestly just treated him like a piece of meat and that somehow made it worse. You can treat me like a piece of meat. All right. So I'm not going anywhere with you guys today. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry. We're going down to the gutters where we belong. (laughs) You're saying she left? (laughs) Well, you know, physically speaking. All right. I bite pretty hard. If I could get further away on this table... I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna buy a new, things, like... I have to buy a new token for him. That's just a disappointed face the whole time. <laughs> disappointed or disgusted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just I just imagine him having like this conversation. It's like, do you find me attractive, Stratcher? Like, you look. I'm delicious. really more into like, you know, sixty feet, foot long, covered in scales, giant spikes, you know. That sort of thing. Spikes, I mean, got it. <laughs> you got scales, but the the, the fish scales. Yeah. And so you got frog scales. What's up? People that? across the table. They're all wet. Feet. All right. Frog feet. So mean. <laughs> so, do you think that you would be willing to go with these two remaining topside? I don't, because I believe I can better put my abilities elsewhere i will remain in touch but i have something that i need to go investigate uh he's trying to say this in a way that he is being pertinent to the current mission but without giving yes. away too much keeping his cards close yes may not say more go then keep yourself safe though he looks. He, he looks at you like, like giving you that look of like you're telling me to keep myself safe. He like <laughs> looks at your arm, looks at you, <laughs> looks at the rest of the party. Just one of those like really small shakes his head, like yeah. walks away. <laughs> one of those. I have survived your predecessors, and I will survive you. <laughs> uh. So, it looks like we will be a pair of duos, then. Yes, so well. Yeah. No, I was just, like, leaning, like, leaning over the table, watching. It's, it's like, Seneca at this moment realizes, realizes that yeah. she's paired with Syria, and she's just like, she's just realized it, and was like, oh. <laughs> so, I hate to see you leave, but I love to watch you go. I was going to say, so I was just like, I see a nice pair right there. (laughs) (laughs) As as Celica looks to where she says that, somebody's eating a pear. (laughs) (laughs) Really likes her fruit. (laughs) (laughs) Look at those melons over there. (laughs) Somebody's digging into some melons. (laughs) Juicy, delicious. It's huge. (laughs) Well, uh, shall we be off? Have you had your fill of breakfast? Sa? Sa? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Have you had your fill? No. Well, perhaps we can remedy that down below. Ew. <laughs> I'm, what? She, she's not Lebanese. <laughs> I'm talking about going down to the cogs. 
Ew. He just kind of makes a face. Stop smacking your lips. I'm sorry, I'm eating chip. I'm eating chip. <laughs> she kind of makes a face. It makes a face. <laughs> Even the, in the yeah. icon moving to it. I mean, she said she has Holly, had a fill. Holly's just kind of like... Wait, you eat Smith's I... chips for breakfast? What? Eat chips no, for breakfast? I'm like... I'm actually <laughs> She's eating, eating chips. chips in real life. I know, I know. Yeah. Well, fish she's the fish. She's got to have the chips to go with it. <sighs> I was thinking breadcrumbs. That'd make more sense. All right. Get us some splish flakes. Let's we be on our way then, Saw. You're the boss. No, I absolutely am not. <laughs> uh, five and six said that they will be going down as well, but not taking the same method. They're going to take some uh, a lift down. They're, they're taking a slightly longer route, so that way they're not... If you guys are being followed, it's not going to be as easy to yep. follow two groups. Yep. Mm. What about me and you, Syria? What are we going to do? Mm. I'm thinking... Uh, you know what? I'm going to keep looking at this note for a little while longer. Something to it. Looking at the what, sorry? At the parchment. Oh, sorry. The mic's a bit far away. Oh, okay. I want to look at this parchment for a little while longer. There's something to it. Can't quite put my finger on it as yet, but the sense it's rather urgent. Hey, what do you want me to do? Just wait for you to finish with the letter or I'll go check something out on my own? That I'll let you decide. I can at least check out the letter if you want. Just in case I see something. You can't read all the different languages. I can speak common, draconic, elvish. That's like most of the things on there. <laughs> Why do I only have a dropper tool? I don't there we know. Go. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I probably just look at that and it's like, okay. Well, this means nothing to me, so I'm going to go investigate some other stuff. <laughs> ah, come along. Yep, yep. All right. Well, while you two are messing around let's venture down to the cogs side swipe transition when we get down near the cogs Kali is definitely going to find some trashy t trashy tier street food eating eating that fancy place yesterday was too much <laughs> you need some of them msgs I need something absolutely deep fried. <laughs> All right, let's uh, grab. My brain keeps defaulting to you saying SMGs, not MSGs. Yes. <laughs> uh, just quickly again, which order were the languages put in? Was it Goblin, Draconic? No, common? it is uh, Draconic, Elven, Goblin, Common. I'll I'll give you a more uh, a better. So as there. we're heading down, Oops. Kali was going to make some small talk with Saw. How dare mm -hmm. you? And get to know Saw a little better. Alright, yeah, so it takes... Uh, let me see here. There's... Where's my D4? Here, I'll use a D6. Lands on 4, great. And he's turned... He's turned southern. And 6. So it so takes uh, almost an hour to get down there. Okay. Plenty so, of time so, for girl talk. So, aside from drinking and revelry, what other hobbies do you have? Are there any? Men. Oh, yeah, I, I was would... not in with revelry. Yes, I would file that in the revelries as well. Uh, do, you, do you play any games? Do you... 
have any other just she plays strange those... skills that you've picked up? She plays those love games. You're not going to believe this, but I'm a fantastic swimmer. Somehow I think I could have guessed. Nah. Are there, any, are there any special foods or anything that you like or avoid? Anything raw. That you like or that you avoid? Oh, I like it. She likes it raw. In all aspects. As one must. <laughs> Rules as written. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> You came here from where was it again? Where did you sail here from originally? Well, I've been here for a couple of years. But you had Enjoy. mentioned that you had sailed here out of somewhere else. Principalities. That's all right, the Lazar. Do you have family there or were you drifting even then? I did. I don't know him now. <laughs> I had a mother and father, but I completely <laughs> forgot about them. <laughs> How many times have you been hit on the head now? <laughs> many times. Hundreds. <laughs> Hundreds. I'm the best at getting hit on the head. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been here for some years, and you... Took station as a dock worker, yes? I mean, I'm good at it. No. <laughs> Everything sounds like an innuendo to her. <laughs> <laughs> no close friends or anyone who will need to talk to or might want to come with us when we leave? I want to stop by my place to get my gold. So I know then on the close friends. <laughs> Gold is her close friend. Yeah. <laughs> Kali is, you're making Kali feel like, wow, so, so lonely. <laughs> Just a now lonely fish in the big ocean. Now she thinks it's like a coping mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> Who says it's not? <laughs> yeah. I, I drink because I'm lonely, and I'm lonely because I drink. <laughs> I'm not lonely. On you, most nights. <laughs> have you have you been happy here? Oh, I mean, it's not a it's not a ship. Did you never think of stowing away? Oh, I've been saving. I'm gonna get my own ship. Well, that answers that. Uh, yep. <laughs> God, Golly just has these moments where like, she gets her responses. She's absolutely not expecting. Cause it's like, <laughs> it doesn't answer the question she asked whatsoever. So she's just kind of like, huh. <laughs> Should I ask more of these touchy subjects? This, this is two awkward people. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much awkward conversation. I mean, Sa has decent charisma, but she's not. It's all a in looks. Talk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kali, Kali has good charisma, but she's she's good at being charismatic in like a in a, di a diplomatic kind of in a diplomatic and in more of a casual way, yeah. not in the sense of like. I'm going to worm every answer out of you you've ever had. I can talk her way out of things, but as far as holding a conversation, eh. <laughs> So, you've been here for some years, and you've worked at the docks that time. You don't have any close friends or anything other than passing relations, and your goal Making is to... Making it sound to... pretty dreary there. Well, no, you said that your goal is to save up to get a ship, so... Spending on other things makes sense that you would try to avoid this. But what do you, are there? Are there other goals, other places you wish to see, or is it all tied well, into your love of being a captain of your own vessel? Well, uh, I'm going to Zendrick, but now I might not need my own ship. 
since I'm student, whatever. So, Zindrik, the destination was more important than the vessel itself. I mean, you gotta have a vessel to get there. I'm not this swimming the entire ocean. I should certainly hope not. Probably could. I do not think that it would be terribly safe to do so. I've heard that nah. even the galleons have troubles. And have the people who were after you when we first met, had they never tried to contact you? Did you ever have any trouble with such things before now? Had you ever had anyone show interest in your special abilities up to this point? Well, it's not something that you flaunt. It's dangerous. Well, that is certainly true, but you are... You strike a remarkable and easily remembered figure. I would have thought if they had been able to find, find you, it may have been another group that had found you before. But I can understand if well, that was the first, or if you simply did not wish to talk about it. I mean, I don't know if it would be that hard to find out where I am. Kind of stand out in a crowd. Tell me about your, your weapon. It is rather unique looking. How did you come by it? Hmm. Uh, that is a good question for the DM. <laughs> <laughs> I think I it think all we said started it started <laughs> when she was think... but a small fish in an egg. <laughs> I was about to say, I wasn't it from a previous quote unquote employer. No, it was something you acquired trying to save somebody. There we go. Because you remember what you were, at least, right? Right. Yeah, so... No, when when you were saving somebody that was uh, thrown overboard and you weren't able yes. to save this particular person, but you were able to so save she's this... She's just going to say... Oh, I just found it. Pretty neat. It took me a while to learn how to use it. You just found something like that. I'm a salvager. It's what I do. It's, as you say, it's rather unique. I would have been very concerned that somebody would try to come back for it. I so, mean, I don't so, whip it out all the time. So, so I'm going to need a deception check. Yep. Let me get my dice. It's behind my beer can. Drinking in game and out of game. We'll be using yes. Kali's path. We'll use Kali's passive though, because Kali's not. Yeah, yeah, no, that's purposely. What was, that's what I was trying. Uh, that is a sixteen. That's enough. Yep. I mean, it's partly the truth. Yeah. Had it had it been me, I would be concerned if I found something as recognizable as that that its previous owner would want it back. Yeah. Finders keepers. And usually I find that it is whoever is strongest is the keeper. Oh. Oh man, what was I gonna say? Some I okay, so I lost the phrasing in, in my head. My head went went blank for a second. It was something along the lines of if you knock the guy out, you're the finder. Finders keepers. <laughs> this the strongest one is often the finder. Vengeance. <laughs> All right. Well, Ooh. hopefully it does not bring you any danger from having it, and it seems to oh, have no. delivered you. It seems to have delivered it you from it already more than once in our presence. We're now this is my baby now. Go back over to the other party for a little bit. Let's see here, right there. Where does uh, the rain is picking up now? Uh, as you guys are, as as Rhiannon keeps scouring this note, essentially. Mm. 
like turning and, it upside down and everything. And unfortunately, making no greater headway on it than she did last night. The more she tries to pursue meaning from it, the more answers begin to crop up, making it essentially less meaningful by the minute. <laughs> yeah, I guess when she starts to feel that like that frustration of not getting away, she'll just put it away. Stuff it back into a pocket or something or do <laughs> into a, Yeah, the bum cheek pocket or something. Yeah. <sighs> It was straightforward. Why can no one ever give a straightforward answer? Is it so hard just to write down what it is exactly that is wrong? Is Silica still there? Work? Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm here. But I thought we said that I wanted to go. That you wanted me to go check something else out. Or anything no, else. No, I said I said it's up to you. What do whatever you want. So yeah, I guess I would still be there then. I probably yeah. would have stayed a bit more then. Sorry, what did you say? Oh that she's just getting frustrated and put the note away. Complaining why nothing is ever straightforward. Hmm. Well these things usually don't seem to be what was the uh, the saying for it again? Straightforward. Straightforward. Two people said something. What? Straightforward. <laughs> no, no, no. He brought up what the, the, was the saying for it. Yeah, the actual yeah. letter. Oh, okay. Right, in that case, so she leans in. Get tries to get like as close as possible so not to be too loud about it. He is listening within the house. I was in Draconic, in Elvish. He speaks but does not act. In Goblin, from what I remember, he comes from below. And last part in common. Speak now. Huh. Maybe it's. And no magic Sorry, go ahead. whatsoever. But there's no magic tied to the letter at all. Not so much as a spec. Huh. Well, I was going to say that maybe you have to speak something, but if there's no magic on it, then... I don't know, think even that would do anything. Hmm. That's what I thought as well, but... Not... Not getting that good feeling that, may, that you get when you feel like you figured something out. Hmm. Perhaps somewhat a more grave, but it's a bit too. Uh, well, I suppose it's terribly sensitive, but nonetheless, mm. it might might be worthwhile taking a trip up there again. Maybe, you know, we always seem to find our way back there for some reason or other. Mm. We're getting our scholarships worth out of the school. I guess. Uh, hmm. Do you think they might That's... have anything on um the tower, like the actual what it might be made out of, or something like that? Well, Perhaps. you you were um informed that it, the other towers are pretty secretive. Only House Lyrander has been open about what the towers are made out of. And there's mm. a specifically Lama, uh, Lama Stone. Mm. Right, but I mean more as in not sp they would specifically know what it's made out of, but be able to look up different materials that could be used in construction. Yeah, using Lama Stone is like, you know, we start from here and see if there's any derivatives known. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, what do you say? Spend the rainy day in a dusty old library. Man. 
That's the only thing I can think of, other than just practicing our own things. I don't know. Well, it's a start something. Let's go. Before we... Mm -hmm. Seraka thinks for a moment, it's just like, uh, never mind. No, no, speak. You got it on your mind now. Might as well get it out. I guess it wouldn't require an insight to Savannah because it's like, it's probably apparent that it's something that she does want to talk about, but she knows that if she does, it might. I guess the best way to describe it would be cause issues. Yeah. Well, let's cause the issue now rather than later. <sighs> keep, Ren will keep egging on, so look at the. You know, so like, come on, get it out. Okay, okay. Back down in. Uh... Out of character, what was it called again? Dragon Script? I mean, yeah, the Dragon, Dragon Crypts. Yeah. Dragon Crypts, okay. Mm -hmm. Back in uh, the Dragon Script, when um, Sir Draxi was still a spirit, and we had to choose what to do with that, were you... Were you serious about sacrificing K9? I like nods ahead a couple times. If I wasn't, I wouldn't have tried. But <laughs> but why? I mean, we would. Well, we weren't properly there to save them because we didn't know they were captured. But still, the. We we know them. You just willing to just cast them aside like that? Well, we it's a new shepherd, didn't we? Had to make a choice. The city of Sean, Shepherd, or someone or the most recent acquaintance who we trusted and followed down into there. That was She's really struggling not to get into it because she knows that if she does, it's probably not going to go well. <laughs> <sighs> okay. It's... <clears throat> he gave us the option of sacrificing someone or something to him to complete the ritual so then it wouldn't destroy everything, right? Correct. Did you... Was that really the only option? Well, I'm sure there were many apparent, but that was the only one I saw. We didn't have the luxury of time to think about it. Seldom in such situations will we ever have the time. And there'll be many more, I suspect, that we'll have to... You have no such... idea how many dragon spirits I have ready. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. My father told me... Well, not me, I... Was eavesdropping on the conversation. He was lecturing my brothers on the decisions of life and what to do. And he gave a story of one of his many battles during the last war, where his choice was flee, possibly chased down, routed, and completely decimated then and there, or leave behind a small selection of men as a distraction, men willing, not entirely able, but willing to make the stand to stave off the would-be pursuers. 
And when those men, he loved like brothers. They trusted him. They listened to him. They followed his every command. And he sent them to die. So he and a small, well, the remnants of his forces could escape to fight another day. And that was only one of many times he had to make such decisions. Not just for his sake, but for the sake of everyone else around him. What's one to do? Whatever comes to mind at first. Can't stop to think then and there. Not if death is at the door. Not if death is threatening to take damn near half a city with it. And I simply decided I'd rather see Shepard around a lot longer than Canine. But that's the thing, he's he's not a soldier. Shepard wasn't mm. a soldier. And he didn't have no. a choice, he was knocked out. He was a civilian. And he was. He is. Still, I said I preferred Shepard. Did you ever have the thought that instead of sacrificing one of them, we, sh we should have sacrificed his ourselves in some way other than Shepard? Like, would you have sacrificed yourself? Hmm. Uh, clearly not, because you guys are still here. Duh. <laughs> if I had been a holier person, maybe. But I'm not. I am that I am. And I intend to stay here a lot, for a lot longer. I'd like to see this all through. Here's the thing. I can't agree with how that ended up, how the discussion, the whole choice was given to us. I feel that there were more than one answer to that. We didn't have to sacrifice anyone if we could have found it. At, at the time, I was too like said, I was actually struggling to find the right word to describe it. So she's like just sitting there thinking about it for a minute before she continues on. I was struggling with my own failure, what I tried to do with. I never really explained it, but I was trying to get whatever happened with the soul in the sword out of it to use that. It didn't work because apparently it wasn't there anymore. But as a uh, as Shepard was, just to clarify, Sidraxer did say it only works for the owner, right? But, but at the time, she didn't know that. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm just. Just in case it was forgotten. No, no. Um, damn, what was I saying? saying at the time I, of... Uh, at the time, uh, Shepard was... Um, sacrificing themselves. There was a... There was a thought that... I didn't know if I should have acted upon... And I don't know if it would have done anything, but essentially it, it should have if my if my sword was able to absorb souls, I thought that could stand to reason that it could also attack souls. So I thought that maybe at, at that moment I could have attacked Sidraxir. Because if he was the link that was holding the contract, if he was literally, if he wasn't around anymore, 
then the contract would have become void just as it was when he was resurrected and Shepard would still be here. Perhaps. But ifs and buts and what ifs don't change the past. And I guess knowing what we do now about her, being that she is something of a angelic spirit of sacrifice, I think, in some small way, it's rather worked out. She died doing what she was put here to do, and for that, we've gained a friend, such as he is. You're making it sound like her sacrifice was <laughs> a good outcome. Depends how you look at it. Is it wrong to deny one's purpose? Or deny someone else's purpose if they were put here for a reason? And if they knew that reason and acted on it? It's wrong to try and sacrifice the people that you've promised to protect. What promises were made that I made that? You tell me. Well, we joined <laughs> Princess Ada to help people, to, you know, save the caravan, save other refugees. And we have. Right. But to me, it more seems like you're willing to sacrifice whoever and whatever it takes to achieve a goal that you see, regardless of whether there's another option or not. You're just like, well, this one works, we'll just use this. Again, the options we had at the time, what were there? You saw that you couldn't get the soul out of. Shepard throwing herself in the face of the dragon. Or canine. None of them. Like, none, not sacrificing no one. It shouldn't have required a sacrifice at all if we had thought of something. But that's what it came to. Perhaps if we had the clock working, really, we might have changed that. But we don't. You do also know, Rhiannon, that the, the type of spell did require a soul. Like, there's no getting around. There's no cheating that. The oh, okay. the the ritual itself. The yeah. types of resurrection spells. Either they need a very powerful gem Component. of some sort, yeah, or in these more evil sorts of rituals require sacrifice. I guess I'll iterate that to Salika. So simply, there was no choice then. No offense. Thank you, DK. A soul... A soul was in demand, and it was it was reaped. What was that? Now, what we can do is is honor a sacrifice and hunt down those. And thanks again, DK. Things that caused all of this to happen. Which, if you don't mind my asking, what is your ambition in the grand scheme of things, Selica? Do you see for yourself? I... Like she's written her teeth because the answer that she got from Syria at first is not what she wanted. But uh, and now it's just been passed. You know, we're just passing on to a different discussion. But she's just going to go through it. And it's like I don't know. So nothing at all. Not rebuild your house and home. Just sort of like lean in and like raise her eyebrows a bit. 
Just when, waiting for an answer. When you do that, some thunder kind of cracks and rumbles throughout Sharn, <laughs> and the rain picks up just a little bit. <laughs> like that boom, meme sound. <laughs> yeah. My ambitions don't matter. They don't matter. Because no. you have not or can't think of any. No, because... <sighs> because I don't matter. Besides of that... Jeez, so emo. <laughs> I knew that's why I sighed because I knew everyone was going to be on it. So I was just like, fuck it, do it anyway. <laughs> you don't matter. No. My, my dear, if you didn't matter, you would not have been written into prophecy. You huh. matter more than you know. If I mattered, I would have been able to play be a bigger part than I have and not a part that actively goes against everyone else. He leans him real close. You, I, Carly, the, and all those that we surround ourselves with are playing a bigger part than any of us could imagine. You sell yourself short far too often and far too quickly. Of character, I really wish I could speak in a louder voice so I can show aggression and stuff, but I can't. <laughs> so yeah, I have yeah. to talk normally. Go, just go, you fucking idiot. <laughs> but why won't it work, you bastard? <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just grab her by the grab her by the blouse. Blouse, <laughs> break her arm. <laughs> I, you have to repeat what you said to me so I can get the feeling back. What was it? Doublet, vest, whatever you want to call. <laughs> you, you matter far. You basically just told you you matter. You're worth way more than you think you are. Or keep calling it. Or yeah, you undervalue yourself. What value is there in a failure? Chance to learn and try again. Oh no. Oh, ah. So emo. Out of character, this is playing perfectly into Berserk. Like, come on. The man always is pretty much failing, but always trying. Struggle on, struggler. Exactly. Right, right, yeah. I know that. <laughs> come, on, in, come on, inhabit those Nietzschean of ideas of becoming the ultimate person. Oh, fuck, I lost it again. Ugh. Oh. You... Plus, you've got a... Go ahead. Sorry. You... Oh, God. I'm getting anxious now. You... She, like, sort of mimics. Don't want you have me in suspense now. Get it out. You don't. You don't know me. You don't know any of the stuff that I've gone through. The amount of times I've failed and I've tried again and have failed worse. You can't just say, oh, do better or learn from the mistake. And every time when I've done so, it has gotten worse. No, you're right. I don't know so much as an iota about you, Ebenor. But I know you're stubbornly persistent and has gotten you thus far. You survived perhaps one of the worst known catastrophes known to Corvair and everyone at large, and still you're here. You lost an arm, and you've got a a replacement of sorts, and still you fight on. Many a man or woman in your position would have been long broken in the mind by now. What makes you think I'm not? Mm. I... You're not in some madhouse rambling to yourself. I 
shouldn't be here. I shouldn't. <laughs> I don't think you would. You should be like, dead. Like, like, in character, I don't know if I need to roll, uh, make you roll an insight check or not. Because I don't know how to do it in character. <laughs> how about we... It seems that you're on the precipice of possibly, maybe, kind of, sort of, being a little bit slightly Ew. upset. Let's roll your table. <laughs> You're in the middle of a mental breakdown. <laughs> you have you're, to roll you're living. Both. You're you're just like right now. You're just shy's inner monologue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Celica's depressive notes. There they are. Can we get a PDF of that? Put it into the no, Google I can't. Scene. I I can't. <laughs> I can't share it yet. Uh, let's. <laughs> Let's go with a 1d6, please. So what you're oh, not even a will the, save. The sooner no. we kill her off, the sooner we get to see the PDF. Correct. <laughs> no, don't. Don't tell them that. Kill Silica, any percent speed run? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime someone asks me, how are you doing Blitz. today? Alive. Uh, Alive is good. Ha- everyone asks how we show, but That's never debatable. Asked, what... hang, hang on, guys. Yeah, no, every... What's that, Guts? That is a... You said the D6? Yes. That is a... That is a three. All right. So at this point in time, uh, I'm going to just put it in Discord for you. I, I have the table as well, in case. Okay, so then you know which one it is. So you're at the point now where you're like, you should probably be leaning across the table aggressively at her, like um, almost on the precipice of like grabbing her by the shirt. You are very okay. angry at this point in time. It's just, it's, and it's not just what she's saying, you're provoking yourself, and it's now spilling out. I need to roll anything to save that. Oh man, I have to roleplay this. <laughs> the way you do it is, what do you do sometimes? Like, if it's like really getting hard, just stand up a bit. And if you're lurching forward, just lurch forward and just like mm, bring the anger into the, like, your chest. But I have to remember what I was saying now so I can get into that. Um... Okay. Okay, I think I think I might might have it. Uh, right. I shouldn't be here, like at all, ever. When you say, you I'm sorry to interrupt. When you say ever, you kind of do like this, arm swiped from from your right arm, swiping out in the right direction. And it knocks this bowl of porridge off the table and onto the floor. My porridge! <laughs> My it's cabbages! Too, it's probably too angry to even take notice of that. Yeah, no, but th- now we now we know that other people are going to also be kind of looking on in this heated, somewhat argument. But also yeah. that's going to make stressed uh, in chat a little bit upset. So. That fight, wow! <laughs> From the corner. All right, continue on. Who are, who are making angry in chat? Stressed. <laughs> uh, so you said that I should never be here, pretty much. Ever. Yeah. Everyone that has died, everyone that has died because of either because of me or other actions or just because I was there is because of me. So I can't stay here and listen to you say that I am worth being here where I am quite clearly not. Shepard shouldn't have been the one to die. I should have been the one to die. I have offered nothing to this group. You can't sit there and tell me that I have when it's clear I have not. I've actually been a detriment. You don't say that you can't understand or anything like that or that you know what it's like to make decisions you weren't there when everything went off so you can't sit there and tell me that I deserve to be here when I don't. She leans back off the table, getting away from like the spilled porridge. 
fine. You're right. You don't deserve to be here. But I think you do. And with that, she gets up and heads outside to hail down a skiff. All right. We'll uh, take it uh, away from this depressing sight and head back down to the cogs. It's getting fun. Woo. I think oh, it's good oh, that they've... I think it's good that we've given them a little more time to themselves, you know. They were... They were partners and friends before I ran into them, so I'm sure they'll be able to work together well for their end of things. <laughs> Alright. So. I Ubud. The skiff eventually gets you guys, you two down into the cogs, or to Cogs Gate. And from there, you're able to enter the cogs. And over the that course of time, uh, okay, Tay. <laughs> over, over that course of time, the rain, of course, picked up, but most of these skiffs are canvas covered um, boats, essentially. So it, it, it wasn't too. Noise, it wasn't too. Too much of a burden. Slightly damp, you enter the cogs, and I'm always damp. Can I speak? <laughs> also, you I told had... us like eight different times that no, you're not always wet. So now you're lying to us again. <laughs> it's me, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you enter the cogs, dampened by the rain, and the streets are busier. There are a number of di displaced, uh, I want to say, citizens of the quote-unquote lesser races that are huddled in groups conversing. There's more beggars on the street than normal. Uh, it's it's a bit more than what you're used to seeing down here. Does this seem more like, just at a guess, related more to the aftermath of the Towerfall stuff or of the like closed-door policy of Kyber's Gate? You don't think it's directly Towerfall-related? It's a possibility, but it's it wasn't like this when you came down after Tower Fall initially a few days ago. There's well, something else is going on. Yes, we can keep our ears perked while we head over to Old Bar Jags first and see what he has ready. And perhaps he might also know since he resides here. All right. So over to Bar Jags we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> there is no opening the door. It is locked. We knock. I knock. The door. There you go. There's some rustling about, and you hear Bar Jag's muffled voice on the other side. Who is it? Holly, I was here to check on your progress. Ah, just a moment. You so hear... the last few times his door was unlocked, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Several chain sounds are heard, and you can hear the unlatching of several padlocks. And he ushers the two of you in and closes the door, rewraps the chain, and only does one padlock this time. Right. What's all well, that for? It's Go ahead. It's been pretty rough uh, down here over the past few days. There's 
brewing and and spilling animosity in Kyber's gates that's sp now spilling out up here. And uh, it's brought some less than friendly people about, so now I have to keep the doors chained so nobody comes in and tries to start anything or tries to take anything that I'm working on. It has slowed my progress, however. I'll be right back. And he heads down into the forge. And after a few moments, comes back up. Let's see here. He has finished the dice set and Celica's shield, but is still making slow progress on the uh, plate armor. He hands you the Bayesh shield and the set of dice. Holly takes it and she looks over the dice set and then she tucks away the dice very carefully and she looks to Saw. Do you have any propensity for using a shield, perhaps? Saw. What's that? Cricket noises. She has Do no you have any I don't know what that big word means. Can you use a shield? I mean, I can, but sh do I want to? It couldn't hurt to have it strapped to your arm for now, I don't think. As long as it doesn't get in my way, sure. Don't see why not. So she'll let Saw have the shield. And look to Barjag and say, Have there been any specific disturbances nearby or anyone who's targeted you for any reason? Or... Uh, Has there been any focal points of this unrest? He looks behind him, and you can see where blood has stained the floor, smeared about a bit. Yes, uh, there were a few people who came in looking to make some quick coin, but I dealt with them. Thieves, or did they appear to be intent on murder as well? There's not really much of a difference down here. Hmm. We will be a little more careful then. Have you already gone and done any of your other preparations for... Moving over once Mav has finished their packing? As much as I can, yes. If there is any other way we can assist, please do let us know, but you do seem to be rather capable of handling yourself, so I will not impugn upon your own honor in any He nods. Don't worry, I've got everything under control. I shall certain... not bother you any further. Certainly been through worse. Thank you. Thank you very much for working so hard on fulfilling your end of this bargain because you have gotten more done in a faster time than I would have expected out of any of the crafts folks that. And Kelly sort of pauses for a second as she realizes that she feels like this is a true statement. But she can't specifically remember having really worked with any craftspeople before anyways. But she, there's only like Hang a on. brief moment of pause before she finishes the sense of than others I've worked with in the past. So your professionalism and skill are very, very gratifying to behold. Are there any supplies or anything else we could perhaps get for you so that you are not forced to leave the place unattended? Sorry, guys. Okay. What was the last thing? Are there any supplies or provisions or anything else you would like us to get for you so that you do not have to leave the place unattended? No. I've 
got what I need and I'm I'm capable of getting what else I'm I might need. I did want to also offer as a a gift a one of appreciation and something of a bonus as well that when we are preparing to head back today, if you would like, I could come by and use some of my magic to expand your forge area, if you so desire, utilizing stone shape. Um, I'll be moving my forge soon enough anyway, so no. Th thank you, though. It's I'm going to be migrating it to Mavs. Okay, so you're going to... I, I'm i sorry, I misunderstood. I thought you were going to take possession of both properties, not completely move to the other. I understand. Mm -hmm. This also, though, clues her in that he probably means he's literally moving the forge underneath from one place to the other. Which would take... Either a lot of magic or a lot of work. Could yep. you even do that without magic? I don't. I mean, I guess you could build a whole new one without magic, but to move it without magic, I don't think you could. Because his is powered by like the lava vents that are underneath, right? That's what it looks like, yes. That are. Have there been any incidents at the Red Hammer? Just out of curiosity. If there have, I don't know of them. I very seldomly visit the Red Hammer. All right, well, thank you so much for your time, and we'll get going so that you can lock up behind us. And Kale bows he gives her a, normal. He gives a curt nod and does the chains for you. Ah, uh, I... Uh, uh, okay. Saw's so token was bigger than mine, and it dropped directly underneath <laughs> it. I couldn't get it. I can't move! Saw, so, you're crushing me! Spirit is willing, but the body is flesh and... Fleshy and I just bruised. picture Saw doing the Zinnia on a top thing, like in Goldeneye, with her thighs. Just crush the life out of him. So, looking to saw, shall we grab a drink before we make our way over to Cray? <laughs> the damn waddling. <laughs> Quicker waddling. It's actually hard to move like that. All right. So I was completely silent the entire way, not responding to. Oh, I've been muted. Oh my goodness! I was like, okay. "Yeah, you got to put effort into walking." No, we just thought that you were just like your response yeah, to walk away. I, my my response was like, "I've been waiting this whole time for it." I am surprised you. Sh I'm surprised you showed no interest in old Butterjag. Something you don't like about him? He's a big guy. I mean, he's too hot. Like literally or metaphorically? <laughs> he's sweltering in there. She was drying up. Yeah. All my moisture is evaporating. Just being there. Don't you understand? That's why I need a refill. She's like slamming you... the bar. Don't you understand about the sh the chafage? <laughs> you can't chafe, Collie. Sapphire comes over with a couple of pints of ale. Sets it in front of you two. Welcome back. Yes. Good to be here, it seems. Uh, how does the bar look right now? Not very busy. It's pretty it's, early. It's pretty early. Yeah, it's pretty early in the day. 
but just like doesn't appear to be like any vagrants or anybody in here, right? No. There's a couple of forge that are there's a out and about kind of chatting and that's about it. You had any trouble, Sapphire? Uh when I do, I make quick work of it. That's good to hear. But Has if you're asking most... worse than lately or worse than normal lately, yes. Is it just because of the difficulties with getting into the gate, or is there something uh, else going on? Well, those who stood for Kavala's newer policies are no longer welcome in Kyber's Gate. So there's there's been a lot of evictions, a lot of animosity. The the newer policies being the ones of trying to you know better it through everybody working together and stuff, right? Yes. So they've essentially been kicking out what few humans were there this time, and then the more sympathetic folk. Yes. Hmm. That is troubling. Those policies seem to be very beneficial for the people there. Uh, I agree. Things were really, really going good over the past year and a half, almost two years now. Uh... And and some basically as if overnight being all undone by Harash and his lackeys. So taking a drink and palming a uh, gold piece over to Sapphire to pay for it, we'll mention. Well, speaking of our mutual acquaintance, have you heard anything about their new accommodations? Only that they haven't come up from from below. That is an important distinction. Rumor is, and he kind of leans in, is that they have some friends. Laughing. Oh, really? Laughing, Tay? <laughs> <laughs> no, Tay, don't do it. I'll I'll mute when I'm not talking. <laughs> it, it's fine. So he's he had said that uh, rumor is that they have some friends, referring to the mutual acquaintance. No, oh, no, no, the mutual acquaintance has some friends still there, down there, and he says okay. it in a tone meaning like in prison together. Yes. So theoretically, if we somehow made a jailbreak, it would not be just one person. Correct. It would be a group that could potentially assist and hold their own. Possibly. If we were able to find their stuff. Yeah. Then again, there are also monstrous races. So, like, I'm pretty sure you said Kaval is an Oni. I don't think yes. she necessarily needs a weapon to punch somebody through a wall. She does not. Thank you very much for the drink. We were quite parched. That's not a problem. I'm glad. It's already done. I'm glad that you've also been able to keep a good handle on things. Have you had any other unusual occurrences? Mm. Uh, yes, but I've got it under control. A couple of new Warforged had made their way here. Um, very disoriented i'm i'm trying to help them help them get through this problem of theirs but uh other than that no nothing Dis nothing strange disoriented they weren't from house kenneth were they i uh, i mean all all forged are from house kenneth but in in a sense, yes. I mean, more recently, they more, they are Pompoy. they are topsiders, yes. Definitely get like a knowing glance to saw about that. I hope that you're able to find them a good station, something to occupy their time, and get them right as rain one. 
sapphire nods. We will be on our way, but we will probably come back in for another drink on our way back. You're always welcome here. Thank you for the continued hospitality. He nods and walks oh, yeah. uh, some oil over to the other two forge that are chatting about. Well, we'll finish our ale and we'll set the empty glass back down, look to Saw and say, Shall we be about our business then? All right. That said, Saw is still muted. <laughs> she she kind of went, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. So that said, we're going to venture back over to the two non monstrous people. <laughs> Are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> Uh, we just left off in a cliffhanger of rage. So I do Wait, need come, to know. Come back. I need I, you to roll initiative against each other. <laughs> I need to know if Celica is following. Um, say, uh, how do I say, Syria? Ran and out. Uh, in into the the rain when she's hailing a uh, a skiff. I. Oh, I don't know. Would would she? I was going to say that she would disgruntingly, but I'm wondering if she actually would now. She has a fairly important mission at hand, so... Yeah. yeah. She's got a job to do. Yeah, she, she will go. But... to describe. Yeah, she'll go. I'll describe afterwards. Okay. Let's do this and just got to adjust a couple of things here. The the uh, the contrasting things here is funny. This is like Syria and Selica are having a fight, an argument. Or oh, Selica's more shouting at someone, and then Sarah and Kali are just like, "Let's go get drinks." Clean <laughs> like, up the sense. Where are you from? What's your name? Fish. Who See? am you? <laughs> I'm fish. Queen. Blub blub. I leak this water. is Celica, and this is Rhiannon. They're enemies. <laughs> Just imagine the right. color underneath, like Syria's thing, has turned from green to red now. So there's some silence for a, for a time as the two of you are on this skiff. One of you angry at the other. Still raining. Uh, yes, it's still raining. It had picked up. There's low thunder constantly rumbling now. I it's think we're going to be like standing at the front, letting the rain hit her face. Just like enjoying it. Something so nice about it now. There's. It's still, uh, I want to say around nine or 10 o'clock in the morning as you guys are. Are we headed to Morgrave? Yeah, see if they have anything on ciphers and cryptology. As my dice goes halfway across the room. All right, and I add an extra one because of the rain. Still moving at a pretty good clip. Taking about 20 minutes to get to Morgrave University from the sleep in. Is there anything to be said on the way there, or should I just go ahead and move us to the uh, university? Rana mm. definitely wants to say something, but she's waiting until Selica seems like she's calmed down a bit more. Well, I don't think that Selica is going to be calm anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> she's. Very visibly seething, I would think. Yes, Guts? An apt description, yeah. All right. 
<laughs> Sun's getting real low, big Celica. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like, oh. I'll just I'll describe it if it comes up again. But yeah, I would that's say that's my secret. Depression. I'm always lonely. <laughs> I'm always depression. <laughs> All right, let's uh, change a couple atmospheric settings here. Rain. Somewhere here. There it is. Apply. Do, 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 do. And Rhiannon. There we go. As we put on the robes and step into the university. Yes, and Samwell over there, like, here's what I love about these college girls. <laughs> oh God, we're gonna see him there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We arrive, and oh, as we get to the courtyard, which is, of course, enchanted to where the rain does not fall along the pathways or where there's seating areas, it falls in the gardens and whatnot where it needs to. But there's there's minor prote protection against the elements <laughs> along where students travel and congregate. Uh, Let's not forget our uniforms. They already put them on. They they said it. Yeah. I missed it. Hey, yes, Buffalo I man. Have. We got some studying to do. Yeah. You know, I want to test something with the atmospheric setting real quick. Yeah! Books! <laughs> I mean, you chose the right people. We have, like, a ton of books that we're reading. <laughs> That's because you're the, the nerds of the party. Excuse you. Y'all both have, like, a plus three intelligence. Yeah, y'all are going Whoa. to school while we're down here drinking. Hey, we're hyper-lethal nerds. It's turn all blue. Yeah, let's do like this. Ooh. To this, I think this shows the rain just a little bit better than the overcast feel of it a bit more. Oh, does it not have rain yet still? Yeah, there's no rain effects, but okay. to to mimic the cloudy sky, I wanted right, to have yeah, something that yeah. doesn't have the cast shadows and all that. Uh, it's pretty obvious from the gate where Samwell is. <laughs> You can hear somebody saying something muffled. It's it's hard to make the exact words out from the distance. But there's a very very clear kind of laughter of, of girls and a couple of guys uh, that that follow every few lines of what is being sang. And Shai, your vibrator is going off. What? You guys yeah. can hear that? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll turn it down. <laughs> it doesn't even try to, to say it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. It's, it's pretty obvious he is having a great time. And he doesn't really quiet down or acknowledge you as you're walking by there's a, a kind of like a a small nod i want to say as he's playing into what we out of character know is a, a old-timey massive microphone with that silvery <laughs> ring around it and he's singing yeah. into it and strumming his his lyre and Basically, he's he's broadcasting his live performance. Nothing but a dragon hound, <laughs> crying all the time. Uh, I oh. think Rhiannon just give him a wink as they walk by to the library. That Only causes to... him to miss a single note. He he plays <laughs> it off, but he was very surprised by Rhiannon giving him a wink. <laughs> Does Sandra also sound when she winks? No. <laughs> <laughs> that it, that was weird enough. <laughs> and then I guess onward to the library. Yeah. 
As we approached the library... Yeah, I just grabbed her. <laughs> As we approach the library, we can see a couple of students over in one of these corners here. They have one of the Arc Rex kind of fiddling with it, and you can hear Samwell coming through it as well. <laughs> so we enter the library. Of course, the outer courtyard is just nothing but muffled silence, essentially. The library is busy of the being a kind of dreary day. There's a, a slight murmur uh, of conversation that lulls about the place. Oh. Let's have an investigation check from each of you. Come in. Are we both looking for the same thing? Because I'm looking into materials. Mm -mm. No, that's why I have each of you doing your own. Okay. I was about to read this as 21, but it's a 12. <laughs> yes, a 21-sided oh, dice. Oh, someone's yeah. at the door. Uh, investigation is a plus 3, so 24. Or 12. Th 14! <laughs> no, 15! 15. 15. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're trying to find some information on the materials... That could be used. You're able to find information pretty easily on how Lyrander's tower was built through using the Llama Stone. You're unable to find out any information about the other houses. You are able to learn some about the theory behind using manifest zone infused materials most are deemed too volatile to properly handle and it is said that the artisans of the dragon marked houses and the mage rites are able to essentially work stone or, or materials that are linked to what their house can already do essentially so you know something like the, the mark of storms able to handle the elemental blessings essentially of the llama stone whereas it, it'd be hard to say what house Denith might be able to work as there's not really a set manifest zone that might operate for them you know, some of, of them are not as simple to deduce so yeah. you know it's definitely a possibility that it is from most likely other planes or, or sorry manifest zones to other planes but there's nothing that tells you specifically what plane it would it would be from, especially in the points of House Caneth. Okay. Let's see. Sorry about that. Okay, so PC, you're back. What was your investigation roll? Uh, I'm going to make an L. Uh... Plus, keep always looking at inside first. I'm like, oh wow, I got a plus five. No, I don't. <laughs> nope. It's plus three. Hey, nineteen. All right. And what are you trying to? Do? Hang on. Oh. I don't know what it is about this like filter color we have going over, but I really like it. It's like perfectly dreary. 
Yeah, it's because yeah. it's emo like you. Shut up. It's it just reminds me. No, it's, it's not emo. It's, it's 100% actually has a Britain. color to it. I was going to say, it's just, it reminds me of Britain. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Britain's emo. It's, it's a big lost. giant it's island of trash that floats through the ocean. All right. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> back. Uh, so, what was Syria or sorry, Rhiannon trying to research? Uh, anything to do with cryptography, like anything to do, she might think has to do with the cipher of the note. Okay. The you're able to find things that would help you cipher it out, but you've already ciphered it. Mm. As far as to, deriving information or hidden meaning it would have to pertain to what the message is already about and she's essentially overthinking it she doesn't know this but it's it is leading her down m- a, a great many paths that are all wrong answers currently. So she, the the more she is delving into it and the more books she looks through, the less happy she is with the possible right. sets of answers. Yeah. And it says plot specific, whatever this is. Uh... Yes. Yeah. So we'll basically, yeah, the, basically the, the dream interpretation books, all that kind of stuff also don't really, don't really help. No worries. I guess in that case, uh... Hmm. not much if she really gets the research other than just Fiddling around with the giant term again. All right. Well, after some time, I'm sure Sela could want to inform you of what she was able to figure out. Roughly, yeah. All right. So the two of you can meet up at a table. There's enough murmuring about that you can have a quiet conversation. (laughs) Quiet. 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 (laughs) I fucking hate you, by the way. I want to rip you. <laughs> I don't know if you're being real about me or not. <laughs> Love yourself, <laughs> idiot. Hmm. Well, guts. It's time for a communal morale quote. Guts. You wanna, you wanna oh, you want me her? to start? Sorry. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, because uh, <laughs> I'd rather it be in Silica's own butchered words. Couldn't find much about stone, other than it's probably used linked to their uh, marks or something. Specifically, like with the storm marks, they could work with the lamina stone. So whatever would work with Kenneth would probably work. Myth making. Hmm. Fascinating. Sure. What did you learn? Not much, not much more than I already hadn't figured out. Yes, which is the wait on something to reveal the message within the note. But I guess this trip has been a complete waste. Marks and stones, huh? Something at least. Sure. May I see the book? Book? What book? Oh, did you, oh, did you put it back or something? The oh, well, it, I mean, I guess I could give it to you. So, you should probably go take it back. <laughs> you know you to look at it. <laughs> the, oh, I guess I could give it to you. All right, it's probably apparent that she's still not calmed down. <laughs> Yes, I'll give it to you. Here, slice it across aggressively. Yeah, 
it yeah. is probably apparent that she's still not happy, which <sighs> I, I don't know if it would be weird to Syria because I don't know if she's seen her angry often enough. Uh, well, I, I, when has Selica imagine... not been angry? <laughs> right, but the thing is, is that other times she was able to calm down after some time. How long has it been since we've been here? Like an hour or two? Remember that, that night where she was so angry that she went out and murdered two people? <laughs> yes, but that was different. That that was over. <laughs> she got she got the stress out on them. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't come but back I, happy until the next morning. <laughs> I mean, I, I take it as like, you know, Rhiannon's dad, probably not the nicest guy, greatest guy to be around. And if he's having, having even the slightest off day, don't even go near him pretty much. I think oh. she's sort of used to that. Yeah, I don't think it's anything really surprising. For I mean, you guys have been together for months now and through s- some crazy stuff. We've definitely seen longer periods of Selica being just straight up angsty and pissed off. Mm. Okay. You should calm down, you fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I guess I'll bring that up. That'll be different if it's later, then. Cool. Uh, but I missed the part about like the book you found and everything. What was it called? Okay, it was that didn't really have a title. There was a multitude of things that she had been looking through, uh-huh. and it, the essential thing boils down to the reason why House Lyrander can use the Lamis Stone so well is because their mage rights and those that they hire as craftspeople are able to work using their marks to essentially get the most out of this stone that they can. And there's no information directly on the other houses or their like their enclaves here in Sharn, their, their, lar- their towers here in Sharn, I should say. Um, but it would seem that each of the planes is capable of producing warped material. Wherever there are manifest zones, there's likely to be some kind of material to be found there that can be harvested and manipulated in some shape or form. And that those who have dragon marks that tie in to that particular plane are able to have greater control over said material. So it we don't know what house Kenneth would be closest to or um, Deneath. I mean, it's a possibility. Let's see. That, that's the mark of the Sentinel, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And so you would think that that would be anything that has a manifest zone to um, the realm of uh, the perfect order, which is uh, Danvi. Hmm. Would I be able to do a roll to make an educated guess about what zone Kenneth might be tied to? You can. It's going to be a very difficult roll because this is an actively studied subject and a closely guarded secret. Mm. Uh, to help me, I will summon my Chinguas. Give me one of them. <laughs> I'm gonna, all, of them are out, all of you, come out. I need one of you to give me guidance. Just in case. <laughs> They, as they are coming out, they begin to dissipate. They are oh, able man. to cast that guidance before the library seems to push them away. Yes, them. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, boys. I mean, imagine like an intercom coming up online. It's like, a, "Do not summon pets inside the library." Thank you. <laughs> that is all. Okay, so what kind of check would it be? History, Arcana. 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 Right, I'm blowing my dice. You can do it. Manifesting air element on this dice. So that's a roll. <laughs> a, a good roll? I am going to inspiration that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me off again. Please don't. It's a three. Uh, 
You were close. <laughs> it went from a one to a two. <laughs> hey! It's not a failure. Well, it is, but it's not a more failure. <laughs> She's gonna, I guess she'll just throw up a hand. I don't know. I don't have a clue. Well, yeah, so, it, again, it just goes to show how difficult it is. There's, <laughs> It's well hidden. There's no books here in the library that, that are going to provide further aid. With it being such a closely guarded secret, it's possible that the houses that want to guard this secret don't allow it to be studied. Not at all. Shit, and I didn't know to turn to the emblem either. I forgot to mention that. So, no ching, no more ching was for the day. I would have assumed that. Uh, well, yeah, it. it it can't be attuned until you uh, use it to recharge a spell. Once you use it, then it will be attuned. So you you get the first time for free, essentially. That's and then sick. once you recharge it, that makes it attuned. First taste is always free. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And even a cantrip will recharge it, so I guess I'll just... Press and digitate it. I'll put some press and digitation into that thing. Sounds good. So, that said, it looks like there's no further help here in the library. Mm. You could, if you wanted to try and search out some people that might be knowledgeable on that subject. Um, but again, it's it's a closely guarded secret. You're not likely to find the information you want here at Morgrave. Mm. It's if it's this heavily guarded, it's most likely going to be found within the people who are there at the house. Yeah. But they got big brother watching. But they're the Skyfire duo. Surely they can just ask anything. <laughs> Spit it out. Tell us what we need to know. You sure there isn't some like woodworking or metalworking shop here that has a Kenneth <laughs> Kenneth Mark teacher? Heck no. <laughs> the only thing we know that is Kenneth is the building itself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or the forest. Where's the architect? Where's the contractor? You just speak to your contractor. So I don't know. I'm stumped unless we like look at history books of the Kenneth Towers or the House Towers or something. Then you didn't really see much on on that. Like there's yeah. there's general knowledge, but I had already taken to account that with your investigation check for yeah. finding info on on the towers. There there's more information specifically on the houses than there are on the towers here in Sharn. Mm. Uh, well, maybe if we find out more about how their mark is used and what it affects, it might help lean us towards what it could be. But then that could also be, again, a part of what you just said with the investigation check. So um, yeah. I've already failed at looking at that. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm taking, when I do these sort of, of roles, I take into account the overall question being asked. Okay. So when you say I'm trying to figure stuff out of, of how this could work out or, or what it could be used for, I'm answering that broad question. And then if you get information from that, you could further that specific set of questions, but there was no follow-up for for a specific set of questions here. You got the information that, that is available here. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm hmm. stuck with what to do next. This is me saying this out loud, just hell because not talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just quietly seething still. Hmm. Yeah, other character uh, pretty stuck as well. Because yeah, we have our in to Kenneth, but we can't really talk to him either without all of us getting cuddled. Or worse. Uh... We'll take a quick break. Think on it. When we come back, you'll have a little bit more time. We'll we'll go back to Sa and Kali. And if you guys wanna Maybe talk in Discord, figure out where you want to go next. 
or what you want to do next, and uh, by the time we get to you, we'll be able to take care of it. Alrighty. Alrighty. Okay. Going on break. See you in a bit. See you soon.
right, everybody, welcome back. Let's cut over to the cogs. Where we are just talking. Oh my goodness, my screen is glitching like crazy. And we had just left the red hammer. Where are the rest of my ability things? There we go. All right, so where to next? I believe it's time to head over and see Cray. Sa, so, is that agreeable? Mm-hmm. All righty. So that will be... As soon as my, oh no, this light broken. Yep. I can't use my flashlight anymore, so I'll just have to pull saw. Alrighty. Pull me away. <laughs> Take me away. And this is the closest shop to Kuiper Gate. Gates. <laughs> it is, of course, locked. And I have no access to it. Fantastic. There we go. Now I can open it. I was about to say, do you, do you mean, like, actually? Or... Yeah, I'm no, confused. actually, I couldn't, I couldn't. I <laughs> couldn't. I was right clicking and it was not giving me any options. You are not the DM anymore. <laughs> Yep. Meanwhile, on Sirenscape, everybody's the Game Master. <laughs> Look at me. I'm the Game Master now. Yeah. So, Spire is taking control of the simulation. Ow. I'm just going to kick myself a couple times here. There we go. The small gnome, Cray, greets the two of you and holds out a mechanical right hand to shake pleasure to actually meet both of you it's a shame i couldn't get your attention the other day safely i will shake his hand do i recognize him no okay and he the the shop itself is filled with a multitude of things but it seems more than anything else, to possibly be some sort of alchemist or inventor's shop. He definitely seems to dabble in, in multiple types of craft. And let me so see. So glancing at his hand, does it look like the sort of stuff we've seen from Kenneth, or does it look no. more home-built? Yeah, no, this is nothing like the elaborate uh, arm that Celica has. This is very rudimentary uh, very simple in its shape and design. The fingers are just basically just two joints. Uh, he doesn't have a full four fingers and a thumb. He has just the three fingers and an opposable thumb. And uh, he also has on, of course, a set of goggles that seem to constantly whir in and out. Let me just pull up my other notes here. It's like there's this unspoken agreement that all artificers are required to have goggles. Oh, yeah. In Sharn. It's like... Yeah, his his are... Um, Look at that guy. You mean the artificer? Why do you know he's an art? He's got goggles. Duh. His, his are constantly whirring in and out, and it makes his eyes kind of grow and shrink in a constant state. Just kind of warbling in different size. <laughs> and he says, It's, uh, it's been pretty rough down here. The, uh, well, well, what's going on in the gate? And, uh, what's spilling out up here? The increase of drug use and violence? Well, it's just making things a bit more tough. Luckily, I don't call Kyber's Gate my home, so you know, I, I have that going for me. That is good. He's a cake for Saw. Get the principalities. 
but we things... heard you could help us, and perhaps in turn we can help you. Hang on, I'm losing connection here. There we go. Uh, yeah, 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 well, I mean, I, I don't know if there's something you're going to help me with specifically, but I do hope that my help towards you will alleviate some of the problems that are growing now. Things, um, while I, I don't have direct support of the prior leader, I also don't have direct support of the new one. However, things were better. Drug use had plummeted, and wages rose, and you know things thing, things were quite nice uh, for the dwellers of the gate before all of this happened. But uh, I, I, I digress. Uh, here, just f follow me. And so, glancing at this large cauldron and the uh, the potions near it, do they yeah. appear to be the same green of healing potions? No. No, this stuff bubbles and swirls about even inside the vials. It does not look very pleasant. It looks caustic. It appears most sinister. <laughs> yeah. And he walks back here and he says, uh, All right, Winkle, you know what to do. And his reflection nods and walks to your left. And as he does so, these stones begin to shift. Oh, Jesus, not not glitch. Shift to the side. <laughs> We're on the glit. We're supposed to be doing a glitch of speed run. Come on. <laughs> and reveals a very narrow passageway heading back behind his shop and towards the gate that leads into Kyber's gate. For you and Sa, it will certainly be a squeeze the entire way back. Uh, but he, it's perfect for him. <laughs> he says, I, I, I can't go with you, but I, I do have to say be careful because it's, it's just not pleasant down there right now. I would like to make an insight check because Kali... Sure does not know this person, has no idea how this person, like, it's yeah. it's feasible that they know of Kali, but yeah. anyways. Uh, 16 plus 3. Yeah, no, he seems genuine. Okay. He most likely, just as, as previously stated, had uh, spotted you at the ceremony and recognized you. Kali just, it, it's one of those things yeah. that she probably would have taken it for granted if it happened to, like, Rhiannon or Celica. Mm -hmm. But for her, she's like, this is too convenient. Yeah. <laughs> Saul, do you think you'll be able to handle your way in here? Yeah. Fun fact, this has always been a part of this map. <laughs> okay. Uh, Saul, what's your passive insight? Not the greatest. You, how you you have wisdom? <laughs> what? What? What is it? I, I need to know. Eleven. Yeah. Your passive insight is an eleven. Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't notice anything. <laughs> what makes you assume <laughs> that she has wisdom? Druid levels. You they don't assume? give her wisdom. She would have to take wisdom <laughs> and not use it as a dump stat. I assume she put some points into the things that are good for her classes. Far, yeah. Far be it from me to make such assumptions, you're, I see. You're crazy. I, I thought she was more rogue than Druid. Not yet. Just, She's yeah. getting there. So, uh, Kali will look to Saw. Do you wish to take up the back or the front? <laughs> Which just position do like, you prefer? Her eyes are squinting towards you. I could do both. Surely you have a preference for which position. Oh. She'll, uh, she'll take lead. Okay. 
So she will look to Cray and say, should we give you some sort of signal if we return this way? Or will you know? Oh, well, uh, the, this doesn't stay open, so you'll have to say something, do something. Yeah, of course. Okay, we will give you some sort of signal. Very Thank well. You. Mm -hmm. Your assistance is most appreciated, and we will find some way to recompensate you for your time. Uh, if everything works out, that'll be enough recompensation for me. Kali will bow and follow after Saw. Oh, jeez, what did I do to her? <laughs> She's gone. Let's try that again. How, how large is this tunnel? It is uh, only a couple of feet wide at its widest and like a foot wide at its narrowest. All right, so she's totally walking sideways. Like she is like half oh, the hiding. entire that's right. way. Yeah, that's what like, I was saying earlier. You have to squeeze. Or squeezing herself through. Yeah. Even Kali has to for most of it. Yeah, any yeah. medium-sized creature has to basically squeeze. Oh, okay, Kali. You, you do that. Instead <laughs> of letting me... Coming. Instead of letting okay. me... The person with the shift button. I'm sorry. Shift me, Daddy You Banks. might even have to hold her arms up to, to accurately squeeze through here. And that said... Holly reveal. does make sure yeah, that uh, Saw... She's not right up on Saw's back. She makes yeah. sure that if Saw is running into anything or has any issues, that there's enough room to take a pace or two back. So, yeah. so Kali is keeping a, a little bit of a distance. So as we get to the edge here, where it is a very jagged sort of precipice, you can see that the tram that had just arrived is, or arrived is emptying itself of its passengers the distance from the edge here to the closest edge is roughly 14 feet almost directly sideways and the distance yeah. how long is how long does the tram ride take a good 30 40 minutes so that's almost close feet. enough to be worth a short rest. No, a short rest is an hour. OK. Mm -hmm. But surely there's some lag time in them waiting to load people on. I'm saying if we got on it right now, by the time we arrived, it would have been close to an hour. No. Or how long did they wait for passengers? You're you're going to have to be hiding. Yeah. You're not welcome here. And. As well, I have as, as we I move forward, you're going to, to see. Yes, as as we see here, uh, if we're going to, to, to watch and wait, I'm just describing the area, then we're going to need checks and things. So about to 14 to feet to, uh, to one side, or about 20 feet directly to the tram and in your two shortest directions. And it would as, be a still jump. as people unload, the gates are opened. And the two guards uh, divert their attention. One walks in here. The other walks in a place that you cannot see. This guard begins to search the tram. Not see anything. No guards. Oops, he fell to his death. Oh, hey, Janice, man. You got to keep on it. <laughs> they need their Sal safety ropes. Sal will mention to Cali. Looks like we're on the roof. Where is he at? Making the top bunk. It would seem that way. There. Uh, the reason why you probably don't see any guards is because of the line of sight. But it is the that lizard folk, King K. Rule, searching the tram. Kind of front to back, and takes out a small hooded lantern and shines it about. And when he gets towards the back of the tram, the hooded lantern's light 
shines on a figure that was not there originally. He takes that figure, who begins to kind of scream and wail, and throws manacles on him and drags them off of the tram. Would this be an Arcana check? Yes. Well, I got a, I got a four total. So, all right. College is just like, yeah. It's... Clearly, it shows somebody invisible, but I don't know how or what it is. Yes. Oh, it's fish butt in her face. You want to make a check, saw? Uh, yeah, I could do, uh, I'll do a perception on it. Nineteen. All right, yeah, I mean, you saw exactly what it did when the light touched the invisible form. The invisible form was basically outlined in golden beads of, of light. So it's like a fairy fire lantern. That's what Saw assumes. All right. Uh, so we can't simply use invisibility to hide. So I was going to ask, uh, how confident are you with, with making that jump? easily get us both there with my wings. And due to their nature, they are silent. That's a better plan than what I had. <laughs> <laughs> she she was about to take shark bait out and do a pharaoh boot jump. The rocket jump? That sounds dangerous. <laughs> I, like, hey, she's already like getting the gun the out. Raid. Like, setting it up, oh, getting ready. Thank you for the raid. <laughs> Oh, no, just, you can just fly. put a big silencer on it. Yeah. Alrighty. The better question is, do you think that you could hold on to the bottom the entire way there, or do you think the roof is the better option? Once we are at the gate itself, I think that we would be best suited to get off of the tram before it enters the gate. So that that way we can wait until eyes are no longer watching. Because out of characterly, like it entered through like that tunnel into the open area. So if we had gotten off of the tram just before the tunnel opens up in the Kyber's Gate proper, mm -hmm. we should be able to like time our entrance when people's attention is not grabbed by, oh, the tram's here. Right. Should be less likely to get spotted. Versus well, waiting until it gets to the actual station and gets looked at and searched. Yeah. yeah. Here's here's the thing. If we go on the roof, we'd have to make our stealth checks and we'd be more easily spotted than if we were just on the bottom. Yeah. And if, if we're on Callie the bottom, we'd have to make... Us yeah. Once we get there, then that's fine. Yeah, I can... I have a good pool of flying time, but once we're on the bottom, we would have to either secure ourselves in some way or I, make I have a athletic hook. checks to hang on. Okay. So I could use like, the I have, and tie it to both of us. I also have like climbing equipment, so mm -hmm. which I've had since we first went down yeah. to Kyber's Gate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you well, got that when, whenever you and Shepard were still yeah. around. Yeah. yeah there's well, a team. yeah, if you if you have your own grappling hook, then that's that'll be perfectly fine. Yeah. The uh, the question yeah, is we like we'll have to make sure we get it attached something that won't make noise or something. So we'll still have to make some checks, but yeah. Probably not as yeah. many as if we were on is the Is there any way to see what's under there from where we are? I mean, we would have no, Kali would have seen there's... it when we were in Cabers Gate before. Yeah. Because it's way up on the ceiling. Yeah, the underside of it is just a kind of rounded off uh shallower form of the top, which is already kind of a, a rounded cylinder. But is there any way to, anywhere to attach a grappler, a grappling hook? 
they're... basic basically you would have to have it attached to the the back of the 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 railing essentially to to have somewhere to grapple and hang on to that wouldn't allow the grappling hook to easily be loosened. But through, I've also got the uh... jostling and whatnot. Yeah, I was going to say, I've got the actual, like, climbing equipment, like, the things you sort of, like, sink in between two rocks. Titans? Yeah, but yeah, that, that, take, yeah, that takes hammering yeah. them in. Yeah, and that would probably be noticed. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think that's the best thing. And in a pinch, uh, I, I do have to there are other things Kali can do. That this is made out of stone and tile. You can... You oh, can well, stone done. Yep. Yeah. Stone-shaped stone shape little hooks. We're good. Yep. I mean, honestly, if we just wanted to be ridiculous with it, could just stone shape a box for us to sit in on the bottom. <laughs> it'd be, it'll be like a little ski lift underneath. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, just stone shape two dangling seats. Just like, ah, uh, so comfortable. Yeah. But I feel like that would, that would be probably safe. be noticed a little easier. Yeah. Just make some, uh, some hooks for us to like hold on yeah. to and stuff. And I can do that and. It's simple enough to do that, that, you know, the other benefit to being a warlock is since I get spells back on a short rest, I can always undo it, too. So there's no evidence. Yeah. yeah when they yeah. get there. Yeah. So, so the, the, the trip, we're good. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not worried about it with the climbing gear that I've got. Yeah. yeah you'll no. you'll be sore. This will not be a short rest because it's yeah. going to be you're going to be basically monkey barring it. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, the whole, whole way there. So this will I mean, be a short rest, but it it's the definitely the most sound outcome or uh, yeah. idea that you guys have come I, up with. I still have a way I could make it a short rest, but I that's also sort of one of Kali's trump card abilities. Oh, okay. For really dangerous stuff. So I would do not want to blow it for this since we have a yeah. other alternative good plan. Yeah. One spell slot, not that big a deal. Right. All right. So. You're going to attempt to fly her over? What's your carry capacity? She can hold you. I, okay. yeah, I was about to say. As long as you've got a fly speed, you can carry another creature without struggling. Like another same size creature. If you were a large creature, it'd be harder. Yeah. But you're you're a medium category creature. So. Technically, I'm a medium. Yeah, it wouldn't be, it's not going to be like Kali's like, oh, so easy, but Kali's able to do it. So the next question up, is, what we... are you going to be visible while this happens? Are the both of you visible? So I plan for us not to be. Kali is going to, when she's going to like grab up under Sa's arms and then we'll activate Areas enchanted cloak of invisibility. Okay. Which will make us invisible and it's it goes to anything that the wearer is carrying as well. And I'm carrying Correct. saw. Correct. You just need two hollows. <laughs> Seek the elder wand. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait, then. inside of the Biesh Grod. <gasps> <laughs> the answer was there all along. Yes. Uh, let's go over to Kyber's So we'll gate. do that, and then I'd use Stone Shape, obviously. Mm -hmm. Hook us all up. The in the invisibility lasts for a minute. Stone Shape is one action, so. Let's see here. Make sure I have everything set. Again, I love the dichotomy of this. That, like... <laughs> yeah. We're... I was expecting us to be like the the clown car of the group, mm -hmm. having having the problems and stuff. We get down here, we're chatting, we're drinking, we're, we're you know just down here. cruising through, going do having a great time. You know things are going smoothly so far. Then we Being cut spy. back to the rest of the party. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're angry. And, fuck you! <laughs> no, fuck you! <laughs> You're a great person. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm terrible. Leave me alone. You're terrible, too. All I don't right. want to talk about it. Let's go to the library. So I've got stuff set for that next map, but speaking of the angsty other group, let's head on <laughs> over. I don't want to come back. 
<laughs> exactly. So I don't want to be here. Come back. Celica's got like job applications in front of her. <laughs> Celica's just ready to walk into the mist at this point. Should have never left. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Got like one of those self help brochures that's like a life after adventuring in you. (laughs) We have arrived back at Morgrave University. We basically scoured all the information we're going to scour on these stones and, and materials that can be touched by other planes. So we've got. We've had some time to think on where we want to go next and what we want to do next. So, what shall that be, ladies? See, I'm, I'm well. Okay, I'm, I'm still scratching my head, but I've. I think we've come to one option. Uh, well, let's see we if think. we could. Yeah, we think. Capitals, bold, underlined, italics. Think. Uh, to give May a call, see if she remembers anything <laughs> Harvey might have told her. Maya. 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 Mayonnaise. Potato. Potato. <laughs> but then I also thought using sending the spell to also perhaps get in contact with your gift. Okay. Maybe ask him. But probably not going to want to do it in the university, more back, probably back at the inn in the room, safely in privacy. Alrighty. To the inn we go. Yay. Let me uh, make sure I have the same effects going on here at the end. Perfect. Uh, We're going to place you guys on the stairs to show that we're in one of the rooms. Mm -hmm. Bring this up a little bit here. And uh, what's the mice, please? Thank you. It's kind of funny that as soon as the other two left, it started raining <laughs> this heavily. Uh, well, I mean, you brought the mood down, so I had to bring all of Sharn down with it. <laughs> so Great. You're actually a cloud answer. You just don't understand it yet. Yeah. No, she has the most powerful mark Thank of all you. the mark of depression. <laughs> the mark of the depression. <laughs> I affect everything around me, even the weather. House Erebonor. House Erebonor's mark of depression. More powerful than the blood of all. It's impossible. It's the new 13th mark. It's too powerful. Like, think about it. If the mark of depression falls into nihilism, you can't really win and argue with a nihilist. <laughs> All right, we're back at the inn after uh, looks like 35 minutes of travel on the skiff. Of course, the rain continuing its dreary, heavy downpour along upper and middle Sharn and lower Sharn, of course, getting all the runoff and waste instead. Wonderful. While you're back there, who do you... Contact first, Maya or Yagith? Probably Maya. All right. And what is it you want to say to Maya? Uh, basically, I just want to ask her if she can recall Harvey ever telling her about what kind of things his mark could do. If he if he ever mentioned manifest zones or if okay, is that if, because I know like we know that at least in our original timeline that he had nothing to do with the house. So, to further explain how I do sending in in this form when it's being cast like this, is it's roughly a 30 second to one minute conversation instead of just 25 words and 25 words kind of thing, or however okay. it is. Uh, so it's just a very short phone call, essentially. Yeah. So you ask, has he talked about his mark or marks? And Maya thinks back... 
and says that she knew about his his secret mark the one that he was able to use during the assassination plot she hadn't known about his other mark and you guys know that that I believe was the um, mark of finding was it not no 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 yeah Origi how, originally he knew, it was. he knew he had the mark yeah. of finding yeah it was the mark of yeah. finding it was house thrash yeah you knew about the mark of finding and then he had that other mark which we now know to be some form of aberrant mark i mean even back then we knew because he, he kind of just said it yes that's what i'm saying you knew about it but she didn't know she she knew of it but not a whole lot of detail on it mm -hmm. she knew it had something to do with poison and let's see i'm just double checking one thing I never remember which of my pages it's on. There it is. Thinking back on the um, the thirteen marks, it suddenly dawns on you the mark of violet poison mm. and his mark was known to produce poisons you Delicious. know that though that mark is no longer on him neither mm. mark is on him oh because his way of assassination was through poison yes yeah so you're you're fairly s certain of of where this uh of who the violet poisons mark was yeah but you can scratch that up the school con yeah now now you know that it's missing but you don't know to which side but your your friends didn't tell you that they had violet poison under their control so I'm fairly Same certain. Yes. As far as relation to any houses, she doesn't have any other information on. She does say that she isn't sure if you're aware or not, but Brayland is sending forces out to Kenrun. Again? Yes. This time... <laughs> in full force to essentially bully them into unsecession. It's you either consider yourselves part of Brayland or you are declaring war. Again, they're not part of the, the treaty and they have no protections. And now they are outsiders on Brelish ter territory, according to Brayland. Oh yeah, that's a ballsy move. I mean, we kind of we we know that the king was replaced, so he probably wants to get that th that knowledge removed as quickly as possible. Yeah. She doesn't say that they're going towards New Sire. It's all specifically to Kenrun. Kenrun. She says that she supposes it's it's likely that New Sire is probably just too low on the totem pole as far as a threat. They've done what they can to make it look that way there in uh, Rote. They've, mm. they've fed as much false information as they can. Unfortunately, they were unable, unable to prevent these forces from going to Kenrun. Hmm. That, that is about all the time that she has. No worries. 
Oh, we've got to finish up here quick, then. <clears throat> uh, then I guess next call to your gif. Asking him pretty much the same thing. Um... Probably would be seeing if he knows anything about the stones as well, but yeah. that's part of the dark. All right, so which is it first? Start with the stones. You know, I also recite the the note to them. Okay, so to the note. To him, it sounds like the speaker has infiltrated House Caneth. Mm, surprise, surprise. So he listens within the house, but he does not act. He he speaks, but does not act. Means that he's not there. He infiltrated it, but isn't physically there. He comes from below. Again, that seems to refer to Kyber, and speak now means speaker. As far as the stones, yes, he's aware, um, because it is something that the dragons have used in the past and make current use of though he's surprised to hear that it's to that large of an extent there in Sharn. he says that by description just double check in here that it it seems as if it is either, let's see, I'm just wanting to make sure one other thing. It, it could possibly be to, uh, um, stone merged with the plane of uh, Thelanus, which is known to increase arcane magic, which would definitely help House Caneth out. If not that, it would be something that's more chaotic, and in the literal sense, that would be Kithri, the turning chaos, um, which kind of mixes the chaos of all the elemental forces uh with steam and and, and uh magma I like the the more tumultuous elemental forces aside from what uh, lamania or thelanus would would use the they secret. they don't he, he's never really seen anything made with specifically something from uh kithri but he has seen Thelanus and says that um, that kind of material is normally uh, silver or gold. He would assume that with Kithri it would be likely either a metallic color or something that kind of swirls and, and is very weird, which does match the description that you, you gave. And that is probably all he has time to answer as well. Oh, thank you. Well, we got some answers. Yes. Some. Hmm. <sighs> certainly, I certainly I don't know why it gives me an idea for that broadcaster thingy, the uh, the not radio. Maybe we could turn it to somehow try find the speaker. Like, it, it makes like a lot of static noise the closer we get to him or something. <laughs> well, I mean, he said that going by what the letter said, it's that he's not there, he's just taken over it. Yeah. Or we use it to somehow drown him out. White noise him out. Maybe. But... Which one is Thalanus again? Like, what? what is its... Uh... Thelanus is the um, the fairy court. It also oh, seems like nature and stuff like that. It's like Feywild, yeah. Yeah. Don't okay. don't don't talk to those people. Those are the, those are the dangerous <laughs> no, people. No, talk to them, please. That's why I mentioned them. This, this is just no, no, no. 
a thought because of this, the whole nature thing. Would druids be helpful with this kind of thing then? Hmm. Druids and fairy court realms. Yeah. I mean, not not specifically for the fairy court, but just because they deal with nature, maybe they can affect the stone somehow. This is a shot in the dark. I don't know if they can, but it's just going by a gut feeling. As we can all saw when she gets back. I mean, Saul was the one to actually see through it. Yeah. So maybe. Plebs. Hey. Shut up, Plebs. Plebs. <laughs> <laughs> That came out of nowhere. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Big is, think. Big yeah. think. Is it possible to do like a check to see if that sounds logical or if I'm just shooting stuff out my ass? You're well, just shooting stuff but... out your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do a check to see how much stuff she shoots at her ass? No, all this stuff is plausible in character, so this isn't yeah. this isn't really something that you could succeed or, or fail at with a check. You're, it wouldn't it wouldn't be reasonable to ask for a, a roll here because this is all guesswork, anyways, and it's all so far it's plausible. It's leading to natural conclusions that your characters would easily make, mm. whether you're not. Whether or not you're following the correct leads is a completely different story, and the only way you can figure that out is to actually physically follow the leads. Yeah. Seeing as, like, Sa and um, Kali might be gone a while, maybe we could find some druids that might know? I don't know. Yeah, I suppose while we still have time. Keep looking around. Alrighty. Just want to double check something. I feel like it's right there staring in our faces and I'm just like completely fucking missing it. Yes, uh, sir. it is. So. Check my map real quick. Here we go. Me there. It is here somewhere. There we go. All right. So you want to seek out some druids here in Sharn. Yeah. Okay. Asking around, you figure out that your best shot uh, would be somewhere in Sky's Edge Park. There's several places to find druids here, but that park district actually has several places that sm smaller druidic sects are constantly kind of keeping things growing and, and alive. It's several towers that have various gardens, small forests, and things like that. That is going to be as the rain continues, uh, we're approaching afternoon now. Do the park druids have an agreement with the park rangers? Uh, that the park rangers suck? Yeah. <laughs> Only you can prevent forest fires. No, we can stop them. No, it's 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 a joke on the class guts. Ranger and yeah. class. Okay. Yeah, I know. Okay, just making sure you got it. All right, so it's going to take about an hour to get there in the current weather. 
So down to Kyber's Gate we go. Metal Gear Kyber's Gate. And now I Metal shall Gear? in our watch together Metal play machines. some some musics. Let's uh <laughs> let's go it with some tension. Hopefully it's not you guys too loud. Are gonna... You guys are going to need to look out while you're down there. <laughs> Watch out for a yeah, Thakreen. Luke. He's crazy. They call him Psycho Mantis. Psycho Mantis. Boss, you killed a child. Amazing. That's right. Right there is where you're the best, boss. <laughs> A surveillance camera? All right. The tram arrives. So yeah, the, the, the part I was talking about where we would disembark is way back where the tram first comes in. So like essentially where you've got the one outside the wall. All right. So as it's coming so through it, the wall, that little area right there. Yeah, we were waiting for that so that we could, you know, let go. As I stone shape the hooks, the hook attachment points off of it. Brilliant. So that we can't be seen and then like wait for our time to come mm -hmm. in. All right. So you, as this is going through that narrow gap, drop off really quickly. It's like less than five feet. You can just like let go and be laying down. Yeah. All nice and stealthily. And you find yourselves, yeah, you find yourselves looking at a not so happy version of Kyber Skate as you are uh, accustomed to. There's more sinister looking faces about. A lot less light sources. <laughs> it's uh, in general, the the mood has gone down several degrees. So what shall you do? Uh, first thing Kali is going to do is, for the first time in a while, she will activate the glamour weave that she has, so that she appears once more to be the gold scale dragonborn. Okay. She doesn't stand out as obviously. Saw does, but Saw wasn't down here with us last. No. So Kali is. Hope is that it's not widely known that Sa is with us. Obviously, there are some who know, but mm -hmm. there's only so much that we can do here. Unless Sa, do you have a disguise kit? Nope. She just turns into a bird and flies away. I could. Oh, no. uh, I could animal shift. You could wild shape. Yes. How many wild shapes do you get? Uh, two a day. How long do they last? Two hours. Let me double check that. Do you want to do that? Hang on. Let me see. Uh, twice per short rest. Yeah. And uh, you, let's see. I don't do have a flying should... speed yet. Okay. Do you think so we should go ahead and do that? Uh, yeah, I can stay and be safe for two hours before reverting. Or as a bonus action, I can go back out. Do you want to go ahead and do that, or do you want to just casually walk around? I mean, I'm fine for just walking for now, and if need to, it's it's just yeah. an action to shift. I uh, I'll have... Go ahead. I will state that while it's rare to see a merfolk, for, uh, a merfolk down here, it's not too much of an oddity because, I mean, we're down here with Medusas, Onis, right. all that kind of more stuff. More bestial. Yeah, so. It's more just you're. It's more just, just she's noticeable. big and noticeable. Yeah. I'm flashy. I mean, but so are some of the other merfolks. Yeah, so. like that. Well, that, and there's, you know, um, Lamia. There, there's other taller 
medium-sized creatures down here. Minotaurs, you'll, like, all of that's down here, so. You'll be leading the way, so I'll walk a couple feet behind you. Being tall or big down here doesn't stand out. Yeah. As long as you don't stand out. So Kali, Kali looks like a gold-scaled dragon now, so yeah, not yeah. as distinctive. And, like, her her outfit no longer looks like the yeah. Biesh garment. It yeah. looks like sort of a robe just worn over yeah. simple clothes. I'll just walk a couple feet behind you. So so Kali will mention you know don't act like you're do not I don't think there's any reason to act like <laughs> Be we're cool. not together. In the fact Honey. it may me it may seem more reasonable if you look like you're a bodyguard of sorts. You know, big and imposing I grew up in the principalities. All I'm right. cool. It just dawned on That's me that the thing. temple to the six looks like a happy face. Yeah. <laughs> just see <Three> the days. <laughs> <laughs> from this angle specifically. It's like, hey guys, welcome back. Who are we killing today? <laughs> welcome back to the temple. Holly. <laughs> does sort of like saw would catch her glance over to where the memorial was mm -hmm. and hold hold her gaze there for a little too long holly's intensely curious if they've bothered to do anything about ship's memorial because if they did then collie's gonna be like we're going scorched earth <laughs> <laughs> if they've desecrated it yeah uh so what are what are our ways down from here? It looks like we should be able to just, without too much trouble, just sort of drop down onto yeah. these walkways. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah well, down right. down below is some sort of shop. There's some some people milling about, but your your real best bet would probably just be going to uh, towards Saw's side and going up, yeah, up the path, and then going onto uh, one of the roofways oh. or walkways oh or just die i can't navigate down here there we go <sighs> there's no water we got a swim boop, speed boop, 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 boop. okay now we're good all right so yeah just a quick hop did down we... boop. there you go when now we were here before did we have any idea when we were showing around like we we found that eating hall place we had gone to several shops Mm -hmm. We went to the temple. We never really saw or got intimated to us anything about like holding cells or a prison thing, did we? Correct. Okay. What is so as we're walking and glancing over at the Temple of the Six, does it look like it's a business as usual over there? Are people still going in and out of it? Or does it look like it's like boarded up, closed since that no, was where Kavala used to like hold court? As if order. you didn't know what's going on already, it would look just as normal as it did before. So there's still people going in and out, etc. People yeah. are still clearly using yeah. it as a place of yeah, you know, what it is. Yeah, okay. if it basically it looks exactly the same, other than the so, yeah, you know so, Kavala's like, not there. Yeah. Holly's going to have Zia uh, while invisible and was going to specifically say if you see someone with one of those lanterns, stay far away. Uh, Got it. Walk that, right just, up to him. Just <laughs> <laughs> mentally rolling her eyes at Zia. <laughs> I, I understand you. You're smart enough to not do these things, but I worry. Uh, but she wants Zia to just sort of scope out around, especially the places that Zia and Kali did not go last time. Mm -hmm. See if anything stands out. See if there are any places that seem to have more of a guard force present. If there's anywhere that seems to be strictly off limits to people, that sort of thing. All right, let's have an investigation check. Okay. Can I do one as well? Sure. I get a 17. Is this for Zia's or Zia's, right? 
Uh, this would be yours. I thought you said Kali was okay. going around looking for things. No, I was having. I was sending out Zia to look for that stuff because Zia's invisible. Kali and Kali was just gonna keep walking. Saw it. Let okay. Saw look for that as well. I mean, I can make checks for both. Yeah, so they'll be in different areas. Yeah. Okay. So Kali's is okay. It's a twelve plus one for thirteen. And Zia's is a flat seven. All right. And what was Saw's? Seventeen. Okay. So let's address Zia's first. Um, Zia has noticed the presence of these lantern bearers um, kind of about in random, in random places. They don't seem to be guarding any one specific area. They seem to just kind of be walking around with these lanterns and occasionally holding them up checking around businesses, things like that. Um, in investigating the Temple to the Six, the memorial is virtually untouched. The temple itself seems to be business as usual. You don't see any indication of the new leadership there. Uh, there's even some recognizable faces that you had seen there previously not that you got to know any of them it's just you remember seeing some of these people probably clerics what yeah that kind of... yeah i have a quick question yeah are the streets populated like not densely or anything but like are there people walking around and stuff yeah that's what i said earlier that oh, it's okay. it's not a uplifting sort of mood it's busy but people are just I was very direct sure about their business. That, I was making sure that it wasn't like a suspicious curfew or anything. No. Yeah, and with Sa, she doesn't know the differences between before and now either. So to her, it's just yeah. business as usual. For for Kali, it's a bit different because she yeah. remembers seeing people stopping, having casual conversation, and there's a lot less of that now. I'm wise. At the moment, we're... Roughly. Behind a couple of hours of what Silicon and Rian are at, because yeah. they did a bunch of back. Yeah, you guys are roughly at noon, and they're okay. roughly afternoon right now. Okay. The only, I mean, from Saz's general knowledge, I mean, prisons are generally on the lower levels. She's never been here, though, so. Right. Uh, for your investigation you're able to kind of pick up that the populace that's here they're not unhappy they're just they're just living essentially here they're they're not yeah. out having any kind of good time or anything they're just they're doing just doing their business their yeah their daily business and and, and living and an otherwise unnot unnotable location, at least to them. The the biggest thing that stands out is these lantern bearers. Yeah. You're able to pick up a little bit of conversation that talks of the prisoners, um, but you don't get any locations or anything more than just conversation at face value. Okay. When we were here last, was there any sort of like local newsletter or anything that they have down here? No. Okay. I didn't think so. So, Kali will sort of walk them at a reasonable pace towards the marketplace mm -hmm. to go through and then. The plan is to get sawfish. Yeah, get get some food for lunch because it's lunchtime, and try and figure out what we can and whether or not Kali can. I'm trying to think. Was there anyone else other than Kavala that we directly 
worked with down here? Not, no, not directly. You had yeah. some work with the, the dwarves, but that was more just they carried you from point A to point B. Yeah. yeah that was really it. There was Kavala's secretary, but you spoke to him, like, once. That's what I'm saying. Like, there, there wasn't really anybody that you would consider an ally. Yeah. So I think Kali will, remembering the place we went to before, that was, had a lot of conversation going on. The, like, the buffet-style place, mm -hmm. essentially. That we'll head there for lunch after like just making our way through the marketplace and Kelly's gonna purposely look in the marketplace to pick up something I'm trying to think of just a seeming necessity that you'd have to replace every so often other than food uh, she's gonna look for like a sheaf of papers for like parchments and things. Okay. nothing fancy just like she's run out of Run out of parchments. Okay. So she's doing that first or after? That, that would be on the way towards lunch. All right. And the the purpose of that, and she'll convey this to Saw when they're at a place where they can't easily be overheard. Just to be like uh, something generic that makes sense. Just keep your ears sharp. And she's also going to be looking very carefully to see if she sees any sign of Gith Yanki or Gith Zarai while we're down here. Since she knows they have the ability to sense telepathy she uses. Okay. And she wants to know if like there any of them seem to be the lantern bearers. Uh no. So the this whole time that you don't see any Gith Yanki or Gith Zarai from Okay. Uh, as you're making your way over to, um, oh, geez, what was his name? I have it right here somewhere. What all forms, animal forms, can you take, Saw? Things that I've seen before. Uh, do you have, like, specific forms that are good for, like, scouting or sneaking or things like that? I got a car. I mean, generally being a bird underground is not a good idea, but... Uh... I mean, I can always go into, like, a rodent or something like that. Saw does not like to shapeshift. Just as a, as a oh. background note, out of character okay. note. <laughs> Well, out of character, Lee, do you have ideas for how you want to approach us trying to find where Kaval is being held? The city looks quote unquote fun. And I have these scant. Okay. Got it. So when we're at the marketplace, that would probably be a place mm -hmm. you could possibly find yeah. contact. Darn thing down there. Dang, nab it. Tail spire is so broken for me today. They've got the shrooms! There we go. Got the good stuff! The All mushroom right. friends. One of whom so, I unfortunately like, murdered. Did I already answer the questions with the um, with you stopping for the sheaf of paper? No, and Saw was going to, she just said, see if she can make contact with somebody who she could use Thieves Cant with. Okay. And what was the question with the um, the paper again? I, I was trying to get this all sorted oh, out. Kali's, Kali's just using that as her reason, so she has a concrete thing she's looking for. Because she knows that people only seem to be out for a reason. So if she's got okay. a reason to be out, picking up papers. She's, she's looking for Office them. Depot. Yeah. And so she's going to use that time as she's going through the market to listen, to hear for rumors and things. But right. Saw, you said you were going to try and find a contact, right? Yes. 
All right. Okay. So, do you have that as part of your? I don't think you had that as part of your background trait. Do you, Shy? What? You don't. You don't have the ability to find connections as your background trait, right? No. No. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think it was the actual thief background. All right. No. Uh, all, right all right. So I, from you, I'll need a perception. And from, or sorry, from from you, I need a persuasion. From Kali, I need a perception. <laughs> Persuasion's my jam. All right, let's do this. Eighteen plus three on perception, so a twenty-one. Okay. Twenty-one here as well. All right. So. Keeping your eyes and ears peeled there, Kali, you're able to find some shadier looking folk. You don't hear anything that's out of the ordinary uh, for what you would expect to be going on down here. You do notice, though, that they're talking in essentially loose nonsense to each other. And you're able to point this out to to Sa, and she's able to pick up that it is what she knows is thieves can't out of character, uh, but she would probably say in character something like they're okay, yeah, ri they're they're doing riddle speak, and she is able to walk over and introduce the both of you in a way that conveys just enough information about what you're trying to figure out without giving you away. I want to ask a question without asking the question. Yeah. I'm I'm just you're... picturing like Callie being at this table with us and we're all speaking in thieves can't. Well, no, no, this is out, <laughs> out in the like... streets. <laughs> okay. Streets, but Callie, Callie's just sort of acting because Callie's good at deception. Callie would use her deception check to look like to make it look like to outward appearances that you're doing business on her behalf, that she's too, too full of herself to speak yeah. with these other people. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just a natural mood for her, anyways. <laughs> she's she's channeling. Wow. She's she's channeling Rhiannon very well. She she had a great mentor here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're able to learn a couple of things one that the packages are stored in the white box which means that the prisoners are known to be in the white, white building. building which the only white building down here is the temple of the six it's that very bright white marble that it is said to have three toys three people well, I'm getting you don't worry yeah well I'm saying for everybody else so. right 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 uh, and that they have they they've been down here playing uh since the snake eyes were rolled I'm referring to harash who is a medusa a male medusa mm -hmm. they don't really want to talk about anything beyond that which they see as kind of general information down here but they know you know based off your demeanor that you're not from down here and that you have probably a little bit more going on which leads them into their next bit of conversation is uh, what you'll pay them for this bit of information they were so kind to give to you. Oh, absolutely. I wasn't planning on... I thought we were sitting at a table and it would have been much nicer, but we're just out in the streets. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll just... Here's what I owe you for drinks, boys. I'll just talk. I'll give them each a gold. And they are very thankful to the kind lady and her associate. That said, we can move on to uh, Shamukar, which is the buffet-style inn that Kali knows about. 
Like, Time to absolutely pig out. All right, so we're heading over there, and we're going to now go back over to the other two party members. While we're eating, I'm gonna slight. I'm going to uh, quietly relay all of that information that I got to Callie. Uh, middle words. Ah, I blinded myself and everybody on stream. <laughs> this one that's the one we go here we do this we grab some rain increase the, the fog multiplier lower that exposure ah oh, beautiful articulate the spleen articulated spleens so back out oh, um, quick question is our lunch time in about an hour long <laughs> uh, it's we'll, a big lunch time <laughs> we'll, we'll get there well, I want to use we, my cut we haven't had we, we haven't had break. the lunch yet there Sab <laughs> okay Tran translation can I have my spells back <laughs> I, that's that's the purpose of warlock is your is you can use your spells yeah, reasonably yeah. freely because you get short rest. You gotta understand, regularly. I'm never giving you a short rest for free ever again. I've designed this to punish Please. you for playing Warlock. Phenomenal cosmic power! It's like, I mean, do, spell do you have it's... to? Do you have to punish a warlock because they kind of punish themselves already? Yeah. By being hey. broken. <laughs> you just uh, what's that spell you're always tossing around? You have that one, right? That's fine. All right. Anyways, Eldritch Blast. We make our way Don't to go. no. Oh, <laughs> jeez! I've already gone over this to Sky's Edge Park. Do I have some music that's not potentially terrifying? <laughs> no. Let's do this one. There. All right. That's hopeful music. <laughs> yeah. To the parks we arrive. And this is uh, specifically Sky's Edge Park. Let me turn down my sound there a little bit. There we go. So we arrive in Sky's Edge Park, the rain continuing on as normal. We're looking for some druids, yes? Uh, mm -hmm. Some druids who... Who do what specifically? Mm. Great. <laughs> I guess druids that have information or have taken been to Thalanus, I guess. Okay, so you want to find some druids who can travel to other planes. I was also thinking. <laughs> Yeah, the character. Mm. Uh oh. No, no. I was thinking like I was thinking back to when we first uh, got Evar and um, what was the name of the other one? Other oh, doppelganger. When we broke him out of their mind control. Uh, I had to look it up, but I, I know. Yeah, we, we know who you're talking about. Yeah, who, whatever his name was. Um, I was like thinking back to their story of like how they came across like the Kyber portal hole. Mm -hmm. And basically just blacked out after that point when they were in Sean. I was thinking, would it be worthwhile to look or try find information about the whereabouts of this hole? You don't have any lead into that, though. Not aside from Ivar, I guess. Well, even then, he doesn't remember where. Hmm. Like, specifically. He, yeah, yeah. The, the blackout kind of caused that issue. Uh, maybe I guess we can ask the druids if they've noticed any. <laughs> they probably don't go that far down, I guess. But 
Yeah, there's there's not going to be any leads uh, in that regards from the Druids. From mm. trying to find information on a different plane on Thalanus, that is going to be a uh, investigation check made with disadvantage. Oh boy. Guess I'll give it a roll as well. Well, first one is a two. Oh, yep. there you go. Uh, just like me, but let me roll. The second one is a two. Perfect. <laughs> oh no, you used your... <laughs> I, I didn't use my inspiration at, at disadvantage. Oh yeah, true, true. Alright, so my first one's a ten. Second one is better than a ten, but I guess we have to use ten. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Alright. So, milling about and asking the druids if they know anything about Thelanus. And most are not willing to talk to you at all about it. You do, however, find somebody whose information seems less than trustworthy. Mostly because they seem to be totally out of it as they're talking to you. They say that it's a lot like Lamagna. It's filled with forest and jungle. Hang on. Okay. Lots of helpful natives. It's <laughs> known that the uh, the El the Eladrin or Eladrin. <laughs> Uh, seem to hail from Thelanus. There's a lot of, you know, satyrs and pixies and sprites, fairies, all of that sort of stuff. Things that you basically would already know from the the books you had growing up, from from both of you. It's not exactly. They're, they're not exactly helpful in any other regard. They, they can't tell you any like materials that are found, found there. They're not able to give you detailed descriptions. They don't they don't even seem to know anybody that's ever actually been to Thelanus. Most druids aren't interested in Thelanus. Most druids are more interested in Dalcor, which is the realm of dreams. And there you have it. Everyone wants to go to the dreamscape. Second time Dalcor. Well, I mean, well, not second time, but again, first easier now, everyone else. They, they do say that if you were to venture out to the Eldine Reaches, you could probably reach out to the Green Singer Druids, who are much more knowledgeable about Thelanus, because it's it's rumored that they actually travel there to do a bit of training. Okay. I suppose that's, that's, like, that's far, far away, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's only 75% yeah. of the continent away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, easy. We'll get there in a hop, skip, and a jump. Well, this is a wasted trip. Mm. Fuck, man. I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> I wish I was as smart as my character. Weren't you guys supposed to be investigating the towers, like, directly? <laughs> no. Yes. Well, we can't do anything to the towers. We can't get in there. We were looking into how to get in there, which is where we are now. But we're seeing both Kenneth towers. We've now seen the Lyranda tower. Hmm. I don't know. I'll give up. <laughs> What is... I'll just get a sending. Hey, sorry guys, we just headed back to Kenron. We uh 
We gave up. Have <laughs> <laughs> fun. Hmm. We're in the middle of a prison break. Can we call you back? <laughs> I don't think so. If I remember right, the towers themselves don't go like, well, the Kenneth part only goes to like a certain point in terms of its height. Like it's not the entire tower they own. The that was the enclave that you were visiting that had uh, yeah. Harvey. Silver Tower seems to be the the entirety. Okay. Well, I guess using the enclave idea I had way before, I definitely want to check out like you know, what's way down, 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 downstairs from the outside. Mm -hmm. All right, that would. take about an hour and a half to get back over to there mm. the rain kind of lightening up a, a little bit and let me actually pull us over here to the silver towers map And we are still on a skiff. I'm just placing us here to have a spot to actually look, look mm. at the size of the, the building and whatnot. When we get there and begin our descent down, we notice that there are more and more forged as we approach the lower wards um, of, of the Silver Tower. And of course, the dragon spires or sorry the dragon towers the warforged are all seeming to guard very heavily the entrances specifically more so the lower you get where it's you know known to be more criminal activity and things like that whereas the ones in the middle and upper districts or wards are they're still guarded pretty heavily, but not as forceful looking. The, the ones closer to the bottom have weapons actively out and prepared, ready to rumble. The ones in the middle portions of the tower are the ones that are constantly checking for paperwork, ushering people through. Uh, they have weapons on them, but not, you know, knocked and ready. And the ones up at the very tip top are more so guarding the vessels that arrive, deliver shipments, and they guard each of the six arches on all uh, eight of the airship landings. But you suspect that there's more magical protection the higher you get up, whereas the lower you go, the more mundane but forceful it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, trying to think. So there's Lyrander airships coming in and out. Are there? Delivering stuff, by chance? Yeah, in in the upper two, the, the upper portion of the towers uh, has it has eight dedicated airship uh, loading and unloading docks, mm. and each of those eight platforms has. Uh, sorry, five arches that go into the inner buildings. A large uh, middle and outer one and two smaller in inner ones that you can see in front of your tokens there. And each of those are guarded with forged. And just once more again, sorry. So further down, are there any like there were entrances down there, weren't there? No open air ones, no. They're all no. They're all closed door. The lowest ones are barred and door, uh, like iron door. The middle ones are big stone and iron uh, doors. They aren't barred. They're large, you know, 10 foot tall by roughly seven or eight feet double doors that open whenever the forged give access to the persons that they clear. All of the middle and 
the the middle ones are all led to by bridges the lower ones are of course ground level and by bridges and the upper ones is bridges and the airship landings middle bridge entry hmm I'm getting the foundations of an idea on well, how to get in, I guess, but I don't feel like I'm getting any closer on the, the note riddle. <laughs> note puzzle. Well, we've, we've answered that. Yeah. yeah. It's specifically like what you, you Geth gave, yeah, gave his closest answer to it. Yeah. I guess that's just what made me think of, like, let's maybe try find the Kaiba hole, close it up or something. <laughs> or block all the Wi-Fi from escaping Kaiba. If you're well, still getting... struggling, you can always make an intelligence check um, to to get some in-character idea if you're not okay. having any out-of-character. Well, I am definitely not having any out-of-character ideas. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Intelligence without proficiency? No, with with proficiency. Cool. Oh, thank God. That is a twenty-six. So not twenty. Money is the simplest answer. Yeah, figure. <laughs> We're forged for people. You hmm. suspect that if you throw enough money at any of the Warforged probably on the lower levels they'll be able to let you in Again, that sucks. so I guess, I guess like the saying money does open all doors especially when there's no magical protection or, <laughs> or very little magical protection on the lower levels and probably speaks the loudest you know the underworld of Sharn to some extent I was I was really suspicious of why you gave us so much gold. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get this anywhere near this much the first time around. I mean, okay. he did get yelled at by his uncle or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> we don't his know. Ancient... <laughs> yeah, we don't know it's actually his uncle. It's just <laughs> it's the equivalent. <laughs> his ancient red dragon uncle. Yeah, his his great grand uncle. <laughs> oh man, money does open all doors. <laughs> and I was so happy to have this big fat amount in my bank. Well, you don't have to throw it all. You just have to talk to to somebody and see see who may be willing to accept a... an increase in in their salary. Yeah. I heard something about docking. Christ. They're not there yet, Sab. <laughs> so are we doing this now or waiting for everyone comes back? I mean, you guys are supposed to be doing your part of the mission while we did ours. Mm -hmm. Which we've been so doing. far, it's been about eight hours of skiff rides. <laughs> well, we never said anything about actually getting into the towers. No, you just gotta investigate it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have an in yet. You like you don't have an, a way in yet. You, this is just an epiphany you had. Yeah. You haven't talked to anybody or found a way actually in. Guess we can go to the lower levels and try and find a warforged willing to be bribed. Yeah, I guess yeah. We'll look for the most uh, disheveled, or not disheveled, but the most discontented by their lowly job. All right, let's see some perception checks. I will use Cohen's eyes for this. Come on, another plus six. Not twenty. Hey. Nice. I got a twenty-five all up. That was a nineteen for Cohen. What's Celica's total? Twenty. Oh, you don't have any perception bonus. It's a plus zero. All right. So as the skiff descends and uh, drops you off at the top of the lower wards before leaving you, essentially, uh, as they won't really ride too far down, 
Uh, you're let off at some of the bridges and you can take one of the lifts to the lowest levels where you're likely to find the most problematic of situations. After rounding and, and, and traveling around the outside of the Silver Tower, you spot an exchange. Um, Cohen notices it at roughly the same time that Celica notices it. That there is a small coin pouch dropped into one of the Warforged hands. They nod and they tap one of the doors a, a couple of times. And it's very specific. It's like three short taps and then a single louder tap. And after a short moment, there's some bars being undone from the other side. And the door is cracked open just a little bit. And the person that handed over this pouch is given another pouch. And they walk away very quickly, pocketing this other pouch. So it seems you found some people willing to do some dirty business. And do you approach them? So the wolf force is walking away? The person that did the business is walking away. Oh, okay. All we can do is that we could set up... Uh, well, we could try to set up um, a way in so then when the others come we can go to it. Yeah, yeah. But sorry, just once more. So, what, so the Wolf Horse was given a pouch of money. He knocked three times and once loud. And the door was unbarred and opened up very slightly. Yeah. And somebody basically stuck out their hand with a pouch and dropped it in this other person's hand. Okay. That that person that received these goods then leaves and the door closes. Oh. So the person inside the door never came out and no one ever went in? Correct. You just saw what you expect to be dirty business. Yeah, yeah. I hope there's enough pow pouches of kibosh shards or crystals. Hmm. Well, maybe an in. Uh, but I don't have disguised self on hand or anything. Hmm. Go sell it. And I've got my and I've got my Lyranda ring on. I'm now contractually obligated to wear at all mm -hmm. times. Uh. Does that mean I uh, have to go and talk to him? Yes. Yep. But uh, let's see. Let's see. I can. Well, I can break break out the Chingwas again. I suppose they can give you guidance or something like that. If that helps. That would help. And if it gets real bad, pass without trace. Oh boy, I can't wait to mess this up. Well really inhabiting the character. More. <laughs> Sorry, what? Two people said something. You said you're really inhabiting the character. <laughs> I said the world darkens a little bit more. Uh, something the Chingwas can do is magical gift. Gain supernatural charm or the DM's choice. Uh, it suddenly got dark. <laughs> <laughs> the depression eclipsed the, the sun. Let's see here. Yeah, I'll just really the Chingwa thing. Thank you, I was actually pulling it back up. The supernatural gift is that the guards happen to be Lincoln Park fans too. <laughs> And they've read all the Berserk mangas. They've read every single edition. All right. Okay. You are going to get... Let's see get one shot you're gonna get the charm of uh, heroism which if you uh -huh. activate 
Um, it lasts for 10 hours. You gain 10 temp hit points, and you're under the effect of the Bless spell. Nice little... Yeah, which adds... Um, it's like guidance for your attack rolls or saving throws. Ching was like, you can do it. I can, I can hit them. So you approach, yeah. yeah, you approach. Excuse me, good sirs. I wish to buy some illegal paraphernalia from you. <laughs> <laughs> you felt like ten feet tall in a giant jacket. All right, so you know, I don't know if I need eight balls. You know, <laughs> you know what? I'll treat myself. So, <laughs> uh, you you approach them. How would you like to go about conversing with them and bringing up this topic? You well, can, you can do it. I believe in you. Do you want me to just get like a general thing? Or do you want me to actually just a general is fine? Okay. Uh, so this whole session, she's going to be pissed, or she's been pissed, so she's going to be continuing doing that. Okay. <laughs> she can't turn it off right now, um, so she's just going to be. Direct, front, and honest about it. Alrighty. Uh, let's see a... Would you prefer persuasion or intimidation? Uh, intimidation. I'm actually proficient in that. Roll away. Lost the dice, one sec. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to re-roll that because it went somewhere I couldn't see. <laughs> okay, I am definitely going to use inspiration because that's a one. <laughs> hey, that's better. That's an 18, so 18 plus 2. That's 20. Mm -hmm. All right. And you can guidance that. Uh, which one's guidance? Is that 4 or D6? D4. D4. If I can pick it up. Goddamn triangle dice. <laughs> You're trying to fight Betty there? Yeah. And I count the top number, right? If that's the one yeah. that has all the same, yeah. No, you just count the 4. It's always 4. <laughs> Some some are they have it in the middle of the line instead of the point. Those ones okay. you would count from the bottom. All right, so it's at the top then, so it's a four. All righty, that's twenty-four. Twenty-four. Yes. Yeah. So you approach, looking like a bad day, <laughs> acting like a worse day, and you're basically like. I want in, and I got some friends that want in. How are we going to go about this? And they size you up, seeing you as a threat. They, You, you can see one of them locking a bolt into their uh, arm-mounted crossbow. And they say, how much is it worth to you to get in? Was it possible to gauge how much was given in that pouch, or would that be... No, it's just a pouch, a fist-sized yeah. pouch of money. It could have been coppers, it could have been platinums. I'm still having trouble figuring out if it would be too much. Would 60 gold be too much? Like, is that more gold than most people would see in, like, a year? It's hard to gauge here in Sharn. You you know that, you know, back before the war ended, that that would have been several years worth of salary to the average farmer, plus some. That, that, that's quite a bit. Um, but during the more prosperous times, it, it wasn't quite the case. Now, after the war and with how everything is going in Sharn, it's, it's a wild guess. You certainly don't think that... 10 gold would be enough. Hmm. 
but to to play it safe i mean the higher the number the better so yeah you you can start with that and see what they say after that okay we can start with 60 then they look over to each other and the one that has the crossbow bolt locked unlocks it and puts it on back in the side quiver and says for how many uh i'm trying to do mental math now um me for i did did Draxia say that he wanted to come if i remember like i'm asking our character no obviously. he didn't say he wanted to he's actually off doing something else in regards to the the towers that's currently unknown okay would it be possible to say then that, uh at most four but we might have a fifth one coming then it's not at most four okay fine at it's most at, five but but most likely four that's how you yeah say. they look at each other again and one shakes his head no the other one says it it wouldn't be enough not not for four what you have here or what you're offering would be enough for three if you could do 20 per person we could make it work as long as you're not asking for anybody to go inside with you meaning an escort oh out of the five people yeah if if you're going to be going five people at 20 then it's 100 gold if you're going okay. four people at 20 it's 80 gold 60 would get you three all right i could i could do 100 when um when would be a good time mm. when is when is the um i guess the least busiest time that looks like in the tower that we've seen it every time we've come anytime at night you haven't been here at a not busy time but you you could ask them and they can tell you that once it gets to later in the evening it's not going to be very busy okay and what time is it now uh it is just before dinner time it's it's getting there's no real gauge on the sun down this far it's just dark <laughs> dark and and wet all the streets run off from from above kind of just making everything nasty right yeah but it's definitely getting closer to dinner time yeah i would like thinking uh character i would think that it would be better to wait until tomorrow for when Harley and sar come back because they might be tired from what they're doing and need recovering okay so yeah, i'll say tomorrow evening then all right when you arrive that's when your payment will be due there's going to be nobody that goes in with you nobody's going to say anything when you come here you hand a pouch of the money over we're not transferring it it doesn't go through a bank when you get here you will hand the pouch to whoever's standing here and you will tap that pouch three times and then you will push their hand towards them we will know what you mean when you do this understood can i just get a repeat of that because i'm typing it down Okay, repeat it back to me if you understood it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard, I heard, I heard. Put the pouch down and tap it tap three it times. times. And push their hand back towards them. Yes. Tap it three times and back towards them. All right, and not to say anything. Correct. Speaking will negate the deal. Okay. Alright. I think I think that's everything, so I'll just read I'll just read it back. Uh 
pay 100 GP for the five people. No one else is to come with us. We don't say anything. We tap the bag or pouch three times and then pass it to them or back towards them. No, yes. we put the bat. We put the gold in their hands, tap it three times, and then push their hand back towards them. Yeah, the the bag of gold, the the pouch oh, okay. of gold. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He said nope. specifically. You're the trying pouch. to confuse me. Specifically the pouch. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do they say how we would get out, or would we just come out the same way, or would we have to go a different way? That's up to y'all. Okay. It might be worth asking if they prefer gold or platinum. <laughs> well, I don't have ten platinum. You can, you can exchange gold for platinum like at a bank. But they said not to include a bank. No, they said don't it. transfer the money with yeah, a bank. I know, I know. A transaction. If you walk up to the bank and you're like, "Hey, I've got, I've got a ten dollar bill. Can I get ten ones?" The bank doesn't record that you just asked for ten ones. They're just like, "Here you go, leave." I know, I know. You get a receipt, but they don't. Yeah, they don't record who did it. Right. And it's okay. like, okay, I mean, you transfer, or you you exchanged for this and this, and that, and they don't care who you are. Yeah, if if it makes it more of a cleaner transaction, I would ask if they would want it in platinum. Then they say they don't care. Money is money, as long as it's not in copper, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> God, just like a box of copper. Here you go, a thousand gold. It's got to reasonably fit in a single palm-sized pouch. Yeah. So it's most likely going to be gold or platinum. So even silver yeah, will be a I, bit big. I mean, I'll try just... and get it exchanged then. Yeah. All right. Pleasure doing business. Likewise. And then she'll go back to the, the group or well, Syria and the skiff. We're, we're... We were hiding behind the corner. Yeah. yeah. You, so you're able to take the lift back up to where you can actually hail a skiff and uh, begin your trip back to the inn where you guys are expected to meet back up. That said, we'll head back over to Kyber's Gate. Change our music back over to not so happy music. <laughs> Just imagine. <laughs> so I go like, yeah! I did it! I bribed somebody. <laughs> Congratulations! Congratulations! It's just like she, all the Ching was give her the Evangelion ending. Congratulations! <laughs> all right, so you have arrived here. You having some lunch? Feast yeah, we're upon lunch and plans. the raw wriggling foods. Oh, and that's right at home. Definitely, definitely having seconds. Yeah, both of you guys right at home. Uh, yeah. Yes, you do get a short rest, discussing things, learning. Awesome. Uh, this place hasn't really changed a whole lot. The proprietors are still loud as ever, but the rules are still the same. Don't start anything, and you don't have to worry about anything happening to you. Um, what's the what's the just general talk that we might overhear? Like, not most, not trying to mostly really people eavesdrop. working. They're just talking just like, about their day uh, at work or, you know, what they've been working on, blah, 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 Can you blah. believe the boss wanted us to do this? Not paying overtime? Yeah, basically. Uh, uh, just ask, you see... we supposed to be on a different screen because we're still on waiting on GM. Oh, sorry. Did you see Jenny at work today? I can't believe it. She's over there. She doesn't have her head wrap over her snake hair. Yeah, poor Bob's a statue now. It's going to be a few days to fix that. You guys might have to go, like, click on your tokens to be on the proper level. Uh, okay. I didn't want to I didn't want to do the, the, the right thing. Mine, mine is glitched right now to where it's, like, showing me half of blocks. It's really strange. I can, like, see into the texture. <laughs> yeah, it does you've that got, sometimes. You've got, yeah. you've got your special eyes. Yes, I do. DM vision. <laughs> <laughs> the not good DM vision. Um, there's really nothing too major being talked about. Some people seem like they want to talk about more, but it's just not conducive to their survival. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the but the general vibe of like the the general populace seems like 
most people were happier and much more content with the way Kavala was running things and don't really yes. seem to be fans of Harash's style. Exactly. So this isn't this isn't the kind of thing that if we did take drastic action, the entire populace is going to come after us. No. Okay. It's very much one of these things where like you're looking at his immediate supporters. Yeah, his goons. Yeah, and the people who he has guarding places, things like that. Yes, you have to worry about. But the average Joe, no, they they like things the way it was. And now it's it's harder. It's harder to get the same amount of money. It's, it's just it's not good all around. There, it's a step backwards. Uh, while we're eating, I would have had Zia come by, slip Zia something, whatever Zia wanted to have, and then had asked Zia to see, you know if the approach to the Temple of the Six is still just the way it was before, that we just, you know, approach it normally, and if they're allowing people to, like, say, visit Shep's Memorial, visit the main... What what would the Temple of the Six have? Is there, like, other than the memorial site, is there, like, a, a chapel or, like, a gathering place or something? A very small something? one, yes. Yeah. So that's the place people would come to seek guidance and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they don't you. exactly have like a chamber where they hold a weekly service or sermons yeah. or anything like that, but yes. It's one of those sort of open things where, you know, you've got some places where you can sit, Yeah, have some quiet, reflect on things. Exactly. So there's there's no nothing suspicious about heading up over there and... Not at all. Taking a moment. Nope, not at all. Okay. So that's... And Kali nor Zia have seen any signs of anything that would be no no Gith Yankee, no Gith Sarai. No Gith. None of that sort of stuff. No. Okay. But we do still know that the, the speaker is involved to some extent. So Kali is still not keen on telepathy at the moment. Right. Despite having the, the Biesh stuff still sort of a We'll use that if we need to. Right. So during lunch, probably just small talk with Saw. Uh, ask Saw if there's anything Saw saw in the marketplace that they wanted. You know, just basically passing time. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't go to the marketplace. <laughs> yeah, we did. We stepped through there while you while uh, yeah, we Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, aside from that, well, once Zia like reports that yeah, you can still get up there and stuff, she wants Zia to like from a distance observe the exterior of the place and where Zia thinks the most likely spots for like a cell or a holding area would be. All right, let me get back up there. We'll also. Zip zop zoodle over. Zip zoopity bop. Because we went through a couple of the areas in there. Yeah. Uh, this glitch we, sucks. We talked to Kavala out on that one big balcony, but she had led us through several rooms to get there. Yes. And then we had gone, obviously, to the memorial site. And I think we had been to one of the upper rooms at one point when we first negotiated with Kavala. Right. If I could get it to where I can get it to work. Uh, so there's a an area kind of tucked away at the top that Zia finds as they're able to kind of walk around some of the hallways. Um, that seems like a likely space, but there's no real easy access to it there's no like stairs or anything like that there's just this kind of awkward space there at the the top of the tower or not sorry the top of the palace and what does it appear to be made of some form of marble marble does count as stone yes yes okay i'm just I'm just making sure <laughs> i don't want to make any weird assumptions mm -hmm. 
and then have like a plan. Okay, I'll stone shape it. It's not stone, it's marble. How dare you use filthy magic on marble? <laughs> Do you have any idea how far this was imported from? It came all the way from Italia. Across through space and time just to be here. We went across dimensions for this. Uh, so, Kali especially, though, wants to know if Sa has any ideas. Like, just sort of fishing, since she now knows. Like, Ka or Kali has repeatedly had conversations with people where she sort of just intimates things that she's trying to imply things. And now she sees that Saw is much better at it than she is, not understanding what Thieves Can't is. Kali's assumption is just that Saw is way better at being tricky with language. So Kali wants to, like, converse with you quietly, Saw, mm -hmm. and be like, so, like, what, what kind of, what kind of obstacles do you think that you're capable of dealing with? Like, are you, are you good at picking locks? Are you good at explosives? Like, what, what would you be good at? Um, oftentimes getting in isn't the problem. So. Yes to those things. So it is the exit strategy for this business we need to work on. Important not to get bogged down in the trade deals. Mm. A clean way out. Make sure that our assets are not tied up too in too much difficulty. So... That was just like, you're getting the hang of it. So how uh, often does the tram my... run? Okay. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, Vex, refer to my PM now. Yeah. Um, the tram seems to... It, it It's on an hour schedule, but it alternates every 30 minutes, if that makes sense. It's, it's yeah. similar to how ferries run. Yeah. Uh, so, it, it's likely that you'll be able to get to a tram within that the latest 30 minutes of, of whatever you're doing um i will say that timing as, might oh, as sorry, go ahead. far as your background let me just double check it my background doesn't specifically state anything about it but i have done it before that's why i said background. yeah yeah no i just wanted to make sure i'm looking at All right, because we had custom made. Got it. Because it also, it also especially feels like there's something we could try and figure out since the general populace is amenable. The your your history with smuggling is it does work here in in the sense that like you're getting somebody out that you're going to have to protect. Well, that you most likely have to protect. Um, but I'm not but familiar in, with this area. So. Yeah, it's the terrain and the vehicle that kind of negate the other aspects of it. You know how to get people out and what to look for, but you know that these trams don't have a cargo bay or a bilge to hide somebody in. Correct. It's and Sal will bring up uh, timing is a good idea, but being that I'm unfamiliar with this territory and, and how the layout is, we might miss it. And if we miss it, it's no go. How thick is the stone of the tram? Um, is it thick enough that if Kali were to stone shape it cleverly? She could make like a cavity inside. Like a it. pocket. Yeah. No, it's not that thick. We're okay. Yeah, it's not like five. I didn't feet think so. Thick. But I wanted to make it's, sure. Yeah. No, it's it's probably about two feet thick. 
Okay. Now at the base, anyways. the The roof is a that a domed structure, but it's still not super thick. Hang on, I'm PMing something really. Well, never mind. I can just say it. Uh, out of character, I have passed without trace. Uh, but the lanterns are. Well, well the lanterns are. As far as we're aware, they only, like, I know we didn't get great checks, but all we saw them do was negate invisibility. Yeah, you they saw them searching for mundane stowaway style stuff while also pointing lanterns in that direction. However, nobody was hiding in any mundane sort of way. They were hiding through the use of an invisibility spell, and so you saw it basically cast fairy fire on them when the light touched them. And usually it's one of those things where if you have the ability to make yourself invisible, a lot of those times people get lazy about it. Yes. They're now, like, I'm invisible. Nobody will be able to see me. Why should I hide? Yes. That's why Kali is always Kali and Zia are always very careful about it. So, our issue is, how are we getting them out? Well, so out of characterly, we've got several options, depending on what it is. Because Kali can stone shape, and the thing's made of marble, if we figure out where they're held, Kali could just make a giant fucking hole in the side of it with stone shape. That wouldn't... Right. That probably wouldn't set off alarms or anything if it's in, like, a side that doesn't face anything. Well, I mean, that too, like, the Pass Without Trace is going to be perfect for this. Uh, yeah. Once we can stone shape them out. Yeah. The big question is, is how are we getting to our passageway? Well, I mean, getting up there to the Temple of the Six is not difficult. No, no, getting no, what up I'm to the is... spot where they're at is, because we there's Zia said there's no stairways or anywhere up there. So that would either involve climbing or flying or jumping. Right. But you're talking it's about just, uh, once um, we've got them. Yes, the the one foot passageway. The the squeezing one. How are we oh. getting them there? Oh, at Cray's place. If that's the only way out. I mean, by the time we got to the edge of Kyber's Gate, we could probably just Book it if we got all the way on the tram. No, no, to that, the that's exit what I'm saying. The how gate. how are we transferring them on the tram? Yeah, that's what we'd have to figure out. I would assume with your smuggling background somehow. Now, the Since pass the without general... trace, I can mm -hmm. do uh, creatures within thirty feet of me. So I can pass without trace all five of us, and it gives okay. you a plus ten bonus to Dex stealth checks. And you cannot be tracked except by magical means. So. I think the way that that would be good to do. If we would can be on the top of the tram instead of the bottom. Well, I think this is one of these situations where we'd have to do a little bit of setup. So. Yeah. Okay. Your, your smuggling background, I feel, would lend to having an idea like this where you'd be like the we need some legitimate goods to to have on like crates or something that we're taking out of Kyber's gate and if we had enough crates and the the tram is on a reasonably tight schedule and you show up for it and you show up not late but you show up so that there's a bit of a time crunch they're probably only going to check so many crates. Right? Mm. Like, like, would you concur with that? Because I think, like, a good way to possibly do it would be we get some crates, we get some goods and things in them, since you have this smuggling background, you know how to make things like false bottoms or angled mirrors that would hide that there's other stuff in them. Correct. And we, 
them, but we get them ready. And since the populace is, you know, amenable to thwarting her ash, as long I, as they don't suffer for it, we could probably I, get the supplies. Yes, but I don't know what we're smuggling. I don't know. No, I, I, I get that. I don't know who, what they look like, what their sizes oh, are. Oh, okay. That. That's, that, that is important. Well, Kali could, I mean, you've, you've read the, the Kornberg Chronicles, so you'd have, and they did like drawings of. I don't read the newspaper. Well, Kali can. Yeah. In so many words, describe and be like, you know, talk about a friend and casually mention about, you know, how surprised she was at how much bigger this friend was than she was, talking about Kavala's size. But we don't have any information on the other two of Kavala's companions, correct? Vex? DM. Um, no, you don't. Okay. Let me look at my spell list real quick. <laughs> we can figure it out. We should be able to figure it out when we're at the temple. I can, when we get to the temple, Kali can use her ghostly gaze ability and see through the solid walls up to 30 feet. Since it's just on top, it should be within while we're walking around. Okay. So yeah, Kali get should be able to get... and, uh, do our little prayers. Yeah. So Kali should be able to get that information at that point. And we're going to have to get our stuff set up afterwards. Anyways, we can also at that time, since you're a sneaky person and Kali has a history of deception and cleverness more than anything else, Kali will leave something behind. Like some one of her one of her trinkets or things, so that she has a reason to go back and find. So it doesn't look doesn't seem weird that we would be going back. Do you do you see any problems with this idea? Uh... Do you have any amendments to it? not we need to get going so that Vex can cliffhanger us yeah uh i think we should go there to pray at first let's just do one step at a time let's see where they're right. at okay All right, we gotta give Vex the chance to cliffhanger us mm -hmm. or i just end it right here the end there okay. we go even no. even worse no we don't even get to see anything <laughs> so uh yeah Kali and saw will casually make their way up there i'll have zia hanging out you know away a bit and as we go and Kali gets to the spot where she would be within range mm -hmm. of what Zia had told her, she will activate the ghostly gaze ability. All right. And she'll sort of, she'll sort of, as she's doing it to make it look casual, let me know if you need me to make a deception check. Uh, she'll sort of like reach back, rub her neck and like do how you like crack your neck from side to side. Yeah. While also looking up. So... You're as as you're coming here and, and walking prayer. walking down to the kind of central area. You let me see if I can just grab you properly there. Woo! Woo! Yeah, Kali, just, Kali just zipped. <laughs> yep. Wahoo! <laughs> All right, so we're able to get down to this central area. Yeah. Oh my goodness. There we go. And. Hey, wait, I think I recognize that person. Yes. This this miniature looks familiar. Yes, it is. Because it's a miniature used throughout <laughs> this map. Yeah, yeah, and I knew you're thinking it's um the second hand person, or the, the person yeah. that helped you pr yeah. previously, but it is, it is not important. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Oh my I just swore I remembered the same token in the same place. So I was like, wait a second. Oh, this this glitch sucks. Oh my goodness, I'm making myself oh, no. bomb. 
There. We go. <laughs> nope, that didn't work at all. Oh, no. <laughs> Goodbye, Saw. Yeah. Well, anyways, as we are here, Saw falls off the walkway, never to be yeah. seen again. All right, you can grab yourself. I can't. I can't. <laughs> it was just <laughs> not letting me. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's. It's. It'll let you, but the way mine is glitching out right now, it's just yes, not happening. Yes, it's all good. So we're able yeah. to make it down to this smaller central area, and Zia gives you this feeling uh, to, to look up. And above you is a tiled platform that's in the center without truly being connected to the rest of the tower. It's above where the tram goes in. You can see the if you kind of scroll back a little bit where the tram actually stops at, where you normally get off the tram, it cuts mm. through the middle of the temple. This is the railing, that that line, and there's this platform that's above it that is a, a cube, uh, roughly 20 Changes by 20 everything. feet. 20, 20 by 20 feet that goes up above. Uh, it is. Let's let's get a measurement here. From there, we're gonna to need to there. figure out how they stop and start the tram then so it is almost 40 feet above you currently so your vision okay, so i wouldn't have activated it then if it was yeah, too far yeah it doesn't it yeah it, it wouldn't let you see far enough it's yeah just enough out, out of reach essentially yep um but that that is where zia believes them to be held if you were to make your way through the temple a little bit and go into the main area where Kavala had initially welcomed you in, uh, where there's a kind of a set of stairs, you'll be able to activate your vision in there. And I'm going to just grab yeah, the tokens I'll and it. place them here, yeah. right Perfect. up in there. And uh, yeah, that should bring you within close enough range. That you can. Yeah, because we're technically above the tram now. Yeah, you should be able to see in with Which your. Which being above the tram ship. opens a brilliant opportunity for us. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you're able to use your vision here. And as you do so, you see two figures kind of shrouded in this darkness. One is recognizable as Kavala. The other is recognizable as Ambassador. And what? Ambassador Ambassador is next to half of a statue of a person. The <gasps> upper half it's of Mary. it. It's Mary! The upper half of it is shattered on the ground next to Ambassador. Uh -oh. oh no. Both of Ambassador and Kavala are manacled in chains up against the wall. They have chains around their uh, ankles, and they have some sort of magical chokers on. You can uh -oh. see what you are assuming to be Mary de Caneth. Uh, his magical choker is not anywhere to be found. He's broken. You, yeah, you can put two and two together to kind of guess what these chokers might do. And that is where we'll leave tonight's session off. Uh. Thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> we'll catch you guys next week. Good night. Bye. -bye. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.